Um, no, but oh, a lot of people jumping so on. We, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot on there now. Yeah, it's right. it's, 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 it's this right there. So really, we are everybody. So which Zoom set up do we have? Attendance There's three different Zooms. Okay, let's open with a pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, We'll do a roll call, Kylie, and everybody seems to be here tonight. Nobody doing remote, so. Gilman? Here. Merrick? Here. McKellar? Here. Bowser? Here. And Brown? Here. All right. Uh, looking for. We have an ad to be done there, right? Do we uh, want yeah. to do three different items, or is it one? It looks like it's one. It's, it's, it's the same. one quote. Which covers all three. When we get to each, we're going to need separate resolutions or separate motions for each of the three. Um, but they are going to be it's all based one on thing the same three. quote package that we've put so together. So it could be one agenda item. We're going to do two yeah. resolutions in it. Yes, three motions. Okay, so I'll make okay. a motion that we adapt the agenda with the addition of the action items requiring the, for the IT stuff. I would support that. Motion by Andy, uh, supported by Jason, yeah. um, to approve the agenda with the addition. Uh, anything else from anybody? Um, we should we probably note the, note the items. Uh, one, uh, items I, J, and K, that'd be licensing for GIS, licensing for CityWorks, and then network hardware through all our items. Okay. Yes. You good with that? Okay. We'll, we'll do a roll call. Okay. Yes. Mauser? Yes. Gillian? Yes. Merrick? Yes. And Brown? Yes. Conflict of interest. I may have a possible conflict of interest with item uh, H simply because they are a customer of mine. And uh, so, it, it, although it's not, they're not the biggest customer of mine, they do purchase from. Okay. my business and i just assume we get to that one we'll so noted and we'll take care of it at that time thank you very good thanks uh, any other complex things okay hearing none uh public comment Kylie, would you read the rules please any person may make an advanced appointment with the board regarding road commission topics for a regular or special meeting in accordance with the open meetings act if an appointment is made the topic will be an agenda item the following applies to public comments Please state his or her name and address. Topic must be relevant to the road commission. Individuals are allowed to speak once for up to three minutes on a single topic, which may be extended by the chair. A group addressing the board requires a designated spokesperson who may speak up to 10 minutes. The board will not act on any item from the public that is not on the agenda. For remote access users, via Zoom. If you wish to participate in public comment, please raise your hand through Zoom. For call-ins, we will unmute callers. If you wish to speak, say yes. One hand is not there. We have a hand up for comment. Okay, um, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, go ahead and unmute them. They show that they're still oh, there. They go. Oh. Okay. Nick, hey. right. Yeah, sorry, there's a bit of a delay. Um, just wanted to say that I am here uh, regarding the Hammond Road bid um, item of discussion. Um, representing Elmer's, just wanted to say I was here in case there was any questions on that. Um, that was all. Very good. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you in mind when we get to that item. Okay. Nobody else has raised their hand? No callers? 
Uh, we got to go on Todd Kohlberg. Okay. Go ahead. Todd? Need to unmute. I am Todd Kohlberg. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, when it comes to the Hammond Road project, I, I may have a comment here. I'd like to reserve uh, my comments for then. And I am representing Reith Riley Construction. Oh, very good. Thank All you. Right. We'll keep in mind, Todd. Thank you. Um, go ahead, to Randy. <laughs> okay, Randy's allowed to talk here. Randy, unmute, please. There you go. How's okay. that? Yep, yep. Uh, thank you. Randy Smith, uh, 6222 Bunker Hill Road, uh, Hammond Road Project. I'm a, um, I'm a referee. I've been involved with the soccer community for 40 years. And uh, with all due respect, I, I hope when you uh, consider that roundabout, you'll consider an uh, access to the, um, the Keystone Road uh, soccer complex um, as uh, that uh, the T Bay's activity there is our second largest activity in the community, in the county, actually, Grand Traverse County. And um, there's, uh, I think it would really improve the traffic flow, certainly during their uh, any events. And with the increase in recreation and, and soccer, um, seems like the only sport that's being active right now. I think we're going to continue to see that in the uptick. So anything you can do as a as a road commission to consider an access into the Keystone Road soccer complex or athletic complex um, when you build that roundabout um, would be awesome. Our, our engineer is shaking his head that he will certainly take that into account. And you know we 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 know there is a lot of traffic that comes and goes there. So that you know that is a concern of ours already too. So. Um, our, our engineer is still shaking his head that he's going to work on that and make, make sure that it works for everybody. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, just mute them out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. In terms of the public comment, if I could actually sure. make a motion that we accept the any correspondence that we've been given, uh, we can deem it read and enter it into the uh, into the record. Huh? The, letter. the letter. Okay. Any correspondence? Any, any correspondence? Any yeah. correspondence. Yes. Okay. So we did receive a letter that we are going to that has been read and into the thing, and we will file it appropriately, and, um, so it is available to the public and somebody else would like to see it. So okay. Um, I guess we're good there. All righty. Um, action items, appointments, um, none tonight. Um, consent calendar, Kylie. The consent calendar is used to expedite business by grouping non controversial items together without discussion. Request by any person present to remove any item from the consent calendar for full discussion as agenda items are automatically respected. The action noted in parentheses for all items remaining on the consent calendar are approved by a single commission action adopting the consent calendar. The manager recommends the following items be adopted. One, minutes. Two, payroll. Three, accounts payable. Four, financial reports. And five, reports and communications. Okay. Consent calendar. Uh, looking for a motion to approve. There were some minutes. Some minutes you want? Yeah, to just pull at? the minutes and I, I need you to find it. I, 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 okay. uh, small correction. I'll make a motion to accept the consent calendar to accept the minutes. We need to scroll down through the minutes. Okay. We may be able to just, if it's a typographical, do it without pulling them and just right. note Okay. It just, just note that there is one item that has, in, in the minutes, that had uh, uh, you and I, Mark and uh, uh, Mark McKellar and Jason Gilman, both absent and voting along with the rest of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. That that just needs to be. We just need to. We were here, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. or at least at least we were we were present. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, okay. That's all. Okay. Motion okay. to consent counterfeit. That changed the minutes. Okay. Support. Second. Second. Okay. Motion by Andy and supported by Mark. Um, anybody else in here would like anything? Hold. Oh, no. No. Okay. Roll call, Kylan. <laughs> it's oh Mouser. yeah was it yeah yeah, yeah yeah it was i see it right there Mouser? yes right. gilman yeah merrick yes mckellar yes brown uh yes okay um item c uh is not there now um item d approval of result revised board rules uh, brad okay I talked to Carrie in some detail about this, and she did some research for us and did find uh, an example of text that could be used to cover us for the occasional commissioner that has to leave town on short notice. And it is covered in number nine now that says, um, commissioner to provide input to the commissioners on any business that will come before the road commission at the meeting. The information for them will be available. So it also says the agenda with such information shall include a notice that one or more commissioners may be attending the meeting remotely and shall be posted and made available at least to the public at least 18 hours before any meeting. So the agenda still stays the same. We need to scroll down to the I'm trying to find out what page it's on here. I'll get closer. We need to go. You got to just keep scrolling down. It's board rules. On the on the, on the hyper. There's a should be a hyperlink on the left. It says board rules. Okay. So then scroll down to number nine. Right there. Yeah. It's almost impossible to read that. Yeah, I couldn't. So make up what happened. Um, so basically, um, what it's basically saying is that it covers us in case somebody has to leave town on short order, and it also says that we will, because of that fact, we will provide contact information for all commissioners on every agenda that is posted to the public. The 18 hours is the law that says we have to have our agendas posted 18 hours, so that doesn't really change anything. It just says that in that time, we will have contact information by that point on that agenda so that if somebody wants to communicate with one of the commissioners before the meeting takes place, they have a way to reach them whether they're in town or not. So depending on whether the commissioner feels that an email is the best way or a phone number, it's up to you to decide which way you want your contact to be made, but it does have to be something that is readily accessible to you in the time leading up to the meeting. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I, again, this is one of these things where uh, we should publish the notice that this is going to happen at every agenda. And it is going to happen every agenda. Okay. Right. So, right. so, and as far as as far as having the emails available, we have our emails available all the time. So, it just the only thing she said is it does have to be on the notice of the meeting. So now we've got five emails on there. Yeah, yeah, I would say that so that's that's, that's going to yeah. be a method that you're able to. That's do that's how we should do that. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's it basically we can't just have it somewhere on our website. There's your email. It right. has to be on the notice who the commissioners are. And the way they can be easily communicated with before the start of the meeting. Um, all right. Okay. So we're going to list all five commissioners and their emails and just call it good. It doesn't matter. It's uh, up to uh, each individual commissioner. That's the easiest way to do it. And then, then there's no bad rush phone number if somebody misses yeah. an airplane or something. Yeah. yeah. If somebody wants, if somebody so prefers that it be their phone number, they can choose that as long as it's a contact way yeah. for each individual one so you could say i want my phone you could say you want your email you could say you want your home phone you could say you want your yeah, um, messenger's the only way <laughs> yeah, no, no. but it has to be a readily accessible to normal people way, way of communicating so it's going to be your email yeah. or a phone number well i think here's kind of the where mark was kind of headed i think and maybe jason too that 
every one of these postings would have the name yeah. and the emails on it automatically. All the time. Yes. All every the time. time. Every, every time. Post. And then if and if, That's a good and way if, to do it if anyway. somebody else wants to another commissioner wants to add your phone number or whatever, we can do that. But I think just automatically put those emails on there. Yeah, I, I think I do. that makes yeah. sense. And in this way at least people can you know look, I mean we're more easily accessible. They find the agenda, they're gonna find us. Right. So yeah. yeah. So everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. It, nope. I'm sure we're going to need to vote on that, you know. Yes, you so, do need to vote okay. to approve these rules. So go ahead, the Justin. only other thing, a uh, couple of concerns with the rules as they are. Um, on item six, um, it says emails, texting, other form of electronic communication by or between commissioners during the meeting shall not be allowed. Yes. Further down? Yeah, further, further, up, further up. Six in there. Yeah, yeah, they're right there. Okay. Um, just a concern. So, uh, what about documents that could be given by staff? For example, you're somewhere else, and then, hey, I need some information that is being passed out to the board now that's fresh. And then we would Kylie can email it to us. We'd have the clerk do it. Then yes. it is okay. So, okay, that's between you guys. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I just, but it, it's the by part that has an issue because if I send an email while I'm in the meeting okay. to anybody, that would violate that. Right. right. Okay. The, 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 that's okay. If, if, that keeps in the spirit of if we can agree order. that that's that's going to happen that's that's fine it doesn't say that staff cannot do that so that's fine uh the other one is uh, if an e number seven if an email text or other form of communication is received by a commissioner attending remotely the email text or other electronic communication uh shall be read by the commissioner receiving the communication during the meeting um mm -hmm. i i have a little problem with that because you know if it's related to the road commission, cool. If it's not related to the road commission, I mean, you know, do, do, theoretically, somebody could be attending something and somebody knows that, hey, I keep my phone on. You hear it, ding, ding, or whatever, or, or whatever the hell the sound is. Uh, and it's full it, of vulgarities. It, it, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you want me to read that? No, no, <laughs> and this, is not, this is not intended to be, this is something to do with road commission. Oh. But, and that's why it says, I would, well, but this whole thing, if you go up, scroll up, please, to the beginning, okay? And it says that this stuff will be allowed and will not be allowed right here, so that you have to be able to be communicate with the commissioner who's attending remotely. An exception shall be made for commissioners attending remotely due to military duty if it is not practical. Okay, so but that's saying just, just the communication question. for well, the road the, commission data. Yeah. 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 Can we go back down to yeah. the, uh, six, please? Seven X is what seven. Yeah. So uh, if an email, text, or other form of electronic communication received by a commissioner attending remotely, the email, text, or other electronic communication shall be read by the commissioner receiving the communication during the meeting. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm in a hotel room in San Diego, California. And I'm going to be texting you from the Green Lake Township meeting. <laughs> no, no, I am, I am working. I'm on a different timetable. I still have clients that are actively working. They're communicating to me. I have my phone right there. Honestly, you want me to read the email or text coming from one of my clients? That's too broad. This is technically that that, that, that is required. That is, if you are that remote, is, if you are participating remotely, if you receive something, okay, that's during commission business, which is what this is considered, it has to be part of record for what comes in. Right. So if you look at it or you receive it. Let me finish. Let me finish. So let's break it right down to the legal definition, okay? That says receive. If I put do not disturb on my right. phone, you're not receiving. my device has received it. But you have not. I have not. All right. That's fine. Well, there we, that's that's I, the only way because I still need to to have these things coming in. Right. Sure. Um, and you know, I mean, truthfully, I've sat here in these meetings and I've I've been talking to people in California before. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I would so, I would say, in, in the spirit of making sure that this is pretty pretty precise and frankly, I mean, we're setting the rules. On this, okay. Yes. Um, Could it be to pertaining? Well, if, if we insert it in between, or other electronic communication, if we insert it between that and shall be read, if, uh, if we inserted the related to road commission business, 
That would solve that problem. That would, would solve, it solves that problem. It makes it specific that, hey, look, you know, clearly, if we're, if we're getting tax about road commission business, we have to say, you know, we have to, to, to put it as a part of the record. But, but some of these financial transactions are nobody else's business but, but that person. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and, and it can happen. I mean, yeah. you, you can have it sitting there, you know, and, and you can hear the noise. Somebody's email goes off or, or what have you. And the people sending the message, sending an email or, or whatnot, may have no idea that, right. they're commun that, that you're in the middle of a meeting. No. Or you could just forget it and, and turn your phone. If off. it was, if it had that in it, that would solve both problems, because what this, the intent of this, is to prevent undue influence on a commissioner during a meeting. Right. All right. And that's so why she said that anything that comes in has to be clarified as to what it is, because you cannot be. You cannot technically. You're not supposed to be communicating on an electronic device in here with anybody either. So, what her saying is, is if you're in a room by yourself, and somebody sends you something, you should not be dealing with it because there is no guarantee that the citizens know for sure what's on your phone at that time or what's on your email well, at that time. I would I would prefer to have that in there stating specifically to road commission business and then I challenge any public person to FOIA the record at that time. Yeah. I, I, I think having that as a, having the rules established that it is road commission business we're talking about. And look we go you know we're we're entrusted with, with a lot of a lot of information, uh, we go into into a closed session. We're we're entrusted that that information doesn't go out. Right. If if we say if somebody says, well, what was that? Sorry, client. And that would be that would Not be considered. But see, that would still be that you are going to be you're going to say, okay, it was received from a client. And that's all you have to say if it's not related to commission business. But you do have to say who it comes from. You have to say that this is not work. This is not commission related. This is a personal issue that came that's, up. That's fine, phone. but that still does not. That's not what it says. Says. This right here right. says that we have to read that. anything that comes in. But it doesn't. I, I my understanding is that doesn't say that Let's you clarify. have to read. <laughs> Let's we'll clarify this by adding by adding that line in between okay. that says related to road yeah, commission business. Because I think to bring it right back to the ground level we just need to be in the spirit of what we're trying to do here right and and we're, what we want is we want if it's somebody is texting or emailing pertaining to road commission business contracts or anything to do with road commission business for any type of influence that's what needs to be disclosed okay mm -hmm. personal communications and business communications unrelated to the road commission business? No. Simple as that. And you know, and, and or or here's the thing. Well, then I just turn off my device. Well, if I turn off my device, then I'm not going to be communicating with you guys. Right. Because that's that's worse. So if I put on do not disturb, it's still red. It it although it doesn't pop up and doesn't get. Hey, I've got three right now. Right now, shit. <laughs> okay, so. But, Can you read those, please? <laughs> you know, life says, don't come home without milk. <laughs> you know, um, but you know, that's. I guess that's what I'm okay. seeing is that you know. I right. mean, I'm sitting here, and you know, you're you're you're, you're say, what about a date? I'm gonna look. It's on my phone. It's live. I'm. It's it's a tool. Right. Um, but we need to be very specific as to what it is, and we need to not be trying to skirt the law and put our our legal counsel. In a position that they have to defend is on things that are, you know, frivolous. So, I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement Mr. with your Chair, positions that it should be, if it's related to road commission, it definitely needs to be disclosed. And if it's, you know, I mean, you guys, those are business phones. I have a business phone. That's and and I get calls night and day. So I I, I think that that intersection in there that says, like you're saying, if it's road commission issue. Then, then you should disclose it. So let's put it in for what it is we're, we're agreeing to here. There was yeah. a number of points here. Let's let's go back. Let me try and recap number nine. 
Yeah, and 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 six and seven, they were all three what was up toward grabs here. We need to know what we're approving, and then unfortunately, the text on that is not very well. It's it's yeah. a different font because it was crossed out, but um, and um, it says basically the method that the public may utilize to contact the commissioners to provide input to the commissioners on any business that will come before the road commission at the meeting. The agenda with such information shall include a notice that one or more commissioners may be attending the meeting remotely and shall be posted and made available to the public at least 18 hours before any meeting. So we agree on that, that we will put the email on every single one and we will put the statement that one or more commissioner may attend remotely and if they anybody wishes to communicate with them their email addresses are listed on this agenda. Perfect. Yep. Six. We're good with that. Okay. Yep. Emails, texting, or other forms of electronic communication between or by or between commissioners during meetings shall not be allowed. So that means you guys are not sending stuff back, back and, and forth. forth. But if something needs to go out, it doesn't say anything about the clerk yeah. being able to send out a broadcast to whoever's not here. Right. So we can still send you something if you're attending remotely. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's not what that says though. That says that I can't be sitting in a hotel room sending a text to a client. No, 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 no. Buy or between, between buy commissioners or buy. not in uh -huh. or between. Hmm. During the meeting. Yeah, you're right, Andy. So what you gotta read it, this is how you read it. Emails, texting, or other forms of electronic communications by commissioners during the meeting shall not be allowed. And then it also then email texting or other forms of electronic communication between commissioners during the meeting shall not be allowed. That's what that says. You have That's to break that out. Says, yeah. yeah, you have to break that out. Right. Well, technically we're doing doing. But you guys aren't sending stuff out no, generally during a meeting either. I don't really have a problem right. with the way that it reads. Right. But that means no, that you, you, you better not be sending it. Right. Right. No, you, you're not responding. You're, you're not responding to the stuff right. that comes in. Right. So, so you shouldn't be. So yeah. let's take it to the next right. logical step. So what you're saying, Andy, and I get it. So, but to the next point, I receive communications that are unrelated to the road commission business, but I'm not to respond. Correct. Correct. All right. See. All right. That's correct. So okay. you're right. You're not supposed to be sending that out or sending it be anything between us. No, the, the only the only issue to think about is let's say there's blue sheets or something or something that the document that we can't that's here, but it's not we're not the person's not in the room, can they get that document right there? Staff can right send that yeah, we can send staff can send we can send that out. I can't I couldn't here. I couldn't take a picture of this on my phone and send it to Mark or Jason or you or this whatever. Staff this would have sending. to forward that. I, 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 I will say, however, on a technical level, if you did have to respond to the clerk or to the or staff with information that you had, um, a sheet, a fax, whatnot, you would be violating this by responding. So it would hand tie, you know, tie your hands during the meeting. No, it wouldn't because you're on Zoom. So you would Let respond say, verbally. Just like you would here. You would respond verbally. Yeah. I see. I'm looking at, at right. other forms of electronic right. communication right. Right. at a right. technical but, level. I mean, but on, you would respond on on your on your tablet or whatever. That would be the response. So in so that would be to make that so that we could receive something from the clerk. If he said on the Zoom meeting or at the meeting, yeah. the clerk is going to be sending an email with this document, the blue sheet related because we get stuff at the table that's at last minute. So shall not be allowed except communication from the clerk related to the meeting or something along that line. Um, yeah, I guess we want to go back at six and look at this. That's right. <laughs> it's not, I, I curiously it's where it is. Just not talk about emails. Let's not talk about texting. Let's talk about the other forms of electronic communication. Zoom is an electronic form of communication. <laughs> it's not considered that though, because it is a visual <laughs> representation of you being sent. It is considered a open to the public form of communication at that point, because you're in a meeting. There you go. 
that's the that's the delineation yeah. because if you take this for face value, right, it it, it would basically say that you, you, you can't, can't zoom. <laughs> right. You can't zoom. Right. No, no, it's because right. zoom is considered an open form of communication when yeah. used in a meeting. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm good. I, I guess I'm good. This I'm not going to fight over. Yeah, this is okay. Six. And then seven. Okay. We will insert. Or other electronic communication related, related to road, road commission, commission business. business. Yep. Everybody good with that? I don't Everybody's see. shaking their head. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back here. We got these things back a few years ago because the concern about blending and foying our personal stuff with. Yep. Road commission stuff. And the whole idea of this was this would be road commission stuff and only road commission stuff. And this would not. That way, if we were FOIA'd, this wouldn't be pulled into the fray. This would be it. So it seems to me if you're remote, wherever the hell you are, you shouldn't be remoting here. Remote you should here. be remoting here. And as far as emails and electronic communication back and forth, whether you're sitting in a hotel room someplace or you're sitting here, the rules are the same. You can't sit here with your phone and text me, text Jason, and get a load of that. But you can't do that in a hotel either. I mean, those rules are already in place. And the whole idea is that if any communication occurs, it's on the record. Just like, you know, I can't write a little note, slip it on the table here again. Well, because now it's not part of the record, it's not open. Right. I mean, if I slipped him a note, just like in sixth grade, you know, this is trying to fold it up though. Uh, Andy, can you stand <laughs> up and read that note, please. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It's the is. same thing. So the rules are the same. We're trying to convolute something that's that already exists here, and just because somebody is plopped in a someplace else and doing electronic, the rules are still the same. The intent is still the same. The end result is still the same. Uh, it, it's just that you're not supposed to do that. So I, you know, I would say use your laptop. Do not disturb on your personal phone. I mean, you're getting paid by your own commission to pay full attention to the meeting. That's right. Man. Pay attention to the meeting. Don't be conducting business while you're here, whether you're here in this room or whether you're in a hotel room sometimes. That's true. So, I mean, the, the rules seem to be, I, I don't, the, should be the same. Anything that's said should be said. So, I mean, the only difference we, between Michael we, Lucci instead of Kyle leaving it here on the desk. She's going to email it to you and say, well, I am a receipt of the, the blue sheet because I'm not physically there. She can't give it to me. Same thing. I mean, I, well, it, Bill, I agree. I agree with you. What kind of you say. I yeah. actually agree. Um, th so that basically means that um, that my phone number is no longer available to the public and that my phone number is no longer available to the commission staff and that nobody's texting me. Nobody's sending me anything on the phone that way at all. It's just yeah. absolutely not going to happen. I guess you can, but then you're opening yourself up to be in FOIA and your, your personal phone be brought into the fray instead of instead of here. I, I would disagree with that. Again, somebody could say, well, he, he spilled the beans on what we talked about back in the back room. No, I didn't. Okay, no, I didn't. I mean, it's essentially, okay, so do you have anything on your... When, when they do a FOIA of your phone, do you have anything on your on your phone uh, that pertains to road commission business? No, it doesn't. I mean, uh, you know. I've checked. I mean, when I'm traveling, I don't take the laptop. Or I mean, the, the iPad. Yeah. I don't take it. I, I just, I don't. I mean, in fact, I gave it up. So I gave it some field a while back because it just was where it wasn't that great. So I just get text from staff and I check the email for the road commission on my phone because it's always ever present ready. And it's your, your email is stored on the exchange server right. to your GTCRC. Yeah, so we don't ever have to ask you for your phone or for anything really if it's an email. Because it if it's an here. email to the GTCRC, it's here. So this is just the tool. It's not retaining anything. Here. It's not retaining anything. It's all on the server. Right. right. So 
Are we, are, well, I guess you need to, I guess you got to get that in there and, and then take a vote, I guess is what we got to do and see if we can approve this or not to me. So, all right, if an email, text, or other form of electronic commission is received by a commissioner attending remotely, the email, text, or other electronic communication relate, if relating to, if related to road commission business shall be read by the commissioner receiving the communication during the meeting. It's legal. It's fine. There you go. Okay. Are we satisfied with all of those? Anything else? I, I can read another one. No, I didn't. All right. Okay. So are we going to uh, approve it with the changes? Is that what we want to do tonight? Move to approve with the changes. Second. Okay. Motion by Jason, seconded by Mark. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Kyler. Tell <laughs> me? Yes. Hear it. No. McKellar. Yes. Bowser. Yes. And Brown. Yes. Okay. Um, public uh, item E. Public <laughs> Act Fifty One, <laughs> Section Eighteen. G. I think that maybe it's higher. Right? Uh, MCL two forty seven dot six six eight uh, I Annual Certificate of Employment Related Conditions. This is. Film. Yeah. So this is just our annual certification then that that we comply with public act 152 that we don't hit offer insurance over the hard cap um and this year we only, we had seven of eight plans that fell under the hard cap for medical um so the people that did select that we paid out for the hard cap so we would never exceed it so uh, we're in compliance okay so we just need approval to sign this yeah i think just you and i okay is that a roll call roll, roll? Is, uh, um I guess we need to make a motion to accept it, and then it's being, I think being we're doing soon, we just roll call them all. Okay, you know, I don't think it matters. Well, just someone's going to Yeah. I just, okay. Well, I need somebody to make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll support it. Okay, Mark made a motion. Andy supported it. Um, and, I, and I don't care. We can do voice vote. We can do roll call. I don't know if it matters, but do vote, voice, voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Okay. Um, item F, disposal of lab equipment. This is Wayne. Yes, good evening. Uh, we have, we're requesting a disposal of some uh, engineering equipment from our lab um, out back that uh, it has sat dormant for a few years now. Um, all these items have, we've, we've checked and they've all been fully depreciated from the time period when we originally purchased them. Um, in essence, we don't use this equipment anymore. It's kind of sitting back there collecting dust and, and it's actually in the way and uh, we need to kind of clear out the one room that it is in, um, according to Chris, because we're, we, we should not be working in there in close proximity to the other of the valves and equipment. Okay, I'll save you some time. I'll make a motion that we just move the web equipment as per staff's recommendation. Second. Okay. Well, <laughs> any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Wayne, that was a tough one. Oh, that was to pull up that public commentary slip. Okay, okay. I saw this going on for an hour away. I thought maybe it would save you. Yeah, the people, the participants, yeah. in case one of those two guys yeah. raised their hand. Okay. Same. Um, okay, I guess we'll probably, um, seeing that we have some other interest in this uh, for the conversation at the um, beginning, um, I guess so we'll probably go a little more in depth on this to more. see where we're at and why we're yes. at where we're at. That's okay, Wayne. So, say that again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So go ahead, Wayne. All right. So thank you. Um, before you, you have the uh, recommendation for the award of the Hammond Road, Garfield Townline Road. This is our locally funded uh, uh, section of uh, reconstruction of Hammond Road. Uh, we did bids. We received our bids on August 20th for the projects. Um, these were advertised on Minton and uh, Gov bids. The uh, known qualified bidders were also emailed that we work with. Following table, uh, let's see here. So we 
have that out there. We had two bidders. We have Elmer's Crane and Dozer at a bid of $1,398,789.74. That is 15.35% under our uh, estimate of 1.652558.53. The second bidder was Reith Riley Construction Company at a bid of $1,391,408.47. That is 15.8% under our, uh, our estimate. The difference between the two bids is $7,381.27. The uh, recommended low bidder is Reith Riley Construction Company. Now, to that end, staff has reviewed the supplied bids and provided pros and cons uh, with in regard to the award recommendations as they relate to the adjacent federal aid project of Hammond Road, the Lafreniere to Garfield. Factors considered were traffic impacts of simultaneous projects, maintaining traffic, staff commitment to two projects of this size, uniformity of work, and the ability to complete the projects as scheduled. If the award is to Reith Riley, uh, Reith Riley was the low bidder and uh, verified, uh, proved that, uh, of the uh, bid is accurate. Reith Riley plans to, to start construction on September 15th with an anticipated five to six weeks construction time period. Given that these projects are separated by the intersection of Garfield Road, conflicts between the two adjacent projects is minimized. Both projects, the Lafreniere to Garfield and Garfield to Townline, are do have planned detours to utilize South Airport Road in order to, uh, or with the minimal overlap of some of the uh, uh, detour uh, signing items. Any contracts, any con conflicts with these can be addressed by either project. And it's likely that the Garfield Road to Townline Road detoured that some traffic control items can be removed from the adjacent federal aid project. I had a, we had a sentence in here, which is no longer valid, but I'll read that uh, because that's what we have on here. This would be true for either award. Uh, Reith Riley had expressed concern with their culvert supplier for the replacement of the large 96 inch culvert near Townline Road, potentially extending the completion date beyond the contract limit or delaying the entire project till the spring of 21. As of uh, last night, uh, we were informed that they have located the supplier with a two to three week delivery date. Therefore, that is no longer an issue of that nation. If the award is to Elmer Screen and Dozer, should the project be awarded to Elmer's Crane and Dozer, staff has concluded the following benefits exist. A single point of contact for construction, thus eliminating conflicting agendas and schedules. Operations with the adjacent project can be scheduled for the best interest of the project and motoring public, and the ability to create a larger top course paving project and potential to echelon pave and eliminate in the elimination of coal joints in the uh, HMA top course. Elmers has expressed the ability to complete both projects at, in as short of schedule as possible with commitment to complete the project as scheduled. Thus, based upon the low bid and the quality workmanship omitted, omitting any delayed issues, staff recommends that the board approve awarding Reith Riley Construction Company the contract at a unit price total of $1,391,000. $408.47. The price is under the engineer's estimate for the bid work. The Grand Traverse County Road Commission has worked with Reef Riley Construction Company, Inc. in the past with satisfactory construction quality. What was our last major uh, project with Reef Riley? With Reef Riley, we had the uh, mill and fill project on um, Garfield from Hammond to South Airport and Three Mile Road from South Airport up to uh, Parsons. Oh, Parsons, yeah. Yes. And then Reese also did the Three Mile, I think, from 
Garfield. So Smith didn't say. That is correct. As well as the uh, as well as the South Airport uh, uh, archive. Right. And, and that was during the labor dis contract dispute. The correct. In the past, we had we had a couple of the projects due to contractors. Right. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion that we award this contract to Elmer's Crane and Dozer. Support. I was thinking that same thing due to previous issues that we've had. Well, it's more, it's more, it's more to uh, and the, the what, continuation between the two projects and working smoothly. Well, I, I wanted to put the motion out to see if we get sports she could actually get into the weeds. Right. So we have that. So we're going to get in the weeds? We're, we're in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So I, I like the single point of contact. I also like when I looking at the, you know, the, the elimination of those cold joints. The Your, what? Coal joints. Okay. Um, if you look at this, they're going to be able to do a larger top course paving across, and, 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 and they're going to be able to eliminate the coal joints, you know? So that road right now has got some weird joint issues in it already. And if they can go down and they can take it down and, and, and just make that basically one continuous stream of asphalt without joints in it, um, that's extremely appealing to me because there's no chance of, of getting some water, water and yeah. issues and, and seeing. So, I mean, and, 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 and for quite frankly, you know, I, I, I will most likely always go for the lowest bit, okay? It's not eligible. But I think this is so close and I just like what they're on. And quite frankly, I appreciate that you brought up the fact about the culvert because that was a deal killer. But I, before I would do it, I would have to make sure that Elmers could, in fact, get that. And they have assured us that they have a supplier. Both have a supplier. Both have, correct. So that's why I'm looking at it that way. Thoughts, Bill? Um, yeah, the competitive uh, bid process, and, and I was a, 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 a commercial estimator for quite a few years. Uh, and I've cried big crocodile tears when I came in second by a few thousand dollars on a multi-billion dollar project. <laughs> and I've also been thrilled to death when you were number two and we were able to go back in and negotiate for some odd reason to pull that sucker out of the fire. Uh, even though I sort of felt bad for the number one guy for a little while. But uh, <laughs> it still goes back, I guess, to the, to, to the and, and, and maybe we'll, I'm puffing this up a little bit, the sanctity of the seal bit process. Um, there has to be some super compelling reason to me why we would defer from that. So, in this case, um, I'm not sure favoring it. Reaching down, I guess. I, I, I don't see the justification of it here just yet. No, do it. I don't see the justification of, of uh, ignoring the little bit. Okay. okay. I'm I'm a little neutral in terms of uh, who we bid it to, given that the difference between the bids. I mean, in, in this particular project, it's 0.001 percent. I mean, it's 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 a small amount of difference. It's seven seven thousand dollars. So that's seventy three seventy four hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, the the one experience that I am familiar with in terms of timetable is our South Airport Road job that Elmer's did. And they did a miraculous job on the timetable. Really uh, yeah. And that's why I asked what was the last major project we did, did with Reith Riley and were we happy? And, you know, was it, you know, where, where were we on the timetable? Did they, did they finish up in time? Or did we have, I don't know, labor dispute issues that parked some people? I remember something. Yes along those lines at 1.2, right. which which can always happen as well. Yes, those last couple projects were, were uh, wrapped Delayed. up in, into the whole delay with uh, with their labor dispute, correct. So, yeah, I mean, 
I, I don't necessarily have a problem with going with Elmer's. If if we go to a vote, I'm probably going to vote yes. If if that's where we go, um, but I was pleased with both the quality and the timetable. Um, the South Airport project that we did. I almost felt afterwards. Oh, geez, you know, it almost seems like we could have bid it a little less because they really did. They took that sucker down fast. Well, yeah. they they threw people at it. But they so threw exactly. That's they, why they put resources they put at it and they made it happen. It. And they exactly. got us back open. There were businesses up there that if they would have been closed any any longer, they were threatened like they are now. In fact, <laughs> right. you know. But and it, it's all I have to say. No, I, I second for discussion. One of my concerns was the 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 delays that we've had in the past with wreath. Now, if they can give us some, some comfort that that's not going to be an issue or shouldn't be an issue this year, I, I would probably be more likely to go with or consider either one. But I was I was real concerned about a couple of projects that been delayed. Yeah, and, you know. and most of those were not through um, the company's fault. It was through you know, and that was all over the state. So right. Yeah. That yeah. Was no, 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 no. So that no, was I'm not saying reach the company. Yeah. No, no. no but that it, was it, was, it, it, it affected our, our it, performance it, as the it, organization. It, it did. It did. Um, my question, um, timetable wise, do we have liquidated damages? No, they don't finish on time. Correct. Okay. Yes. So, and that that would be the same for either one. So that doesn't really uh, matter. And 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 I guess I'll chime in a little bit. Um, to, to Bill's thing too, because I, I remember a project I did for a municipality too, um, and I, I sat there running the bid pretty much all night before I put a number on it, and and made it up my mind I had to be under a certain point, and that's the only reason I got that job because it was by a very few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, for clarification, um, in accordance with the MDOT spec book and our previous projects, um, labor disputes is an item that. They are, the company is held harmless on and liquidated damages does not apply. Does not apply. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never hold a company accountable for things that are outside of their control. Yeah. yeah. I, I just simply oh. am looking at it from the standpoint of what they specifically talk about, what they can do in terms of how that asphalt is going to be laid and elimination of joints and I've, I've seen more and more roads where it just seems to be one continuous stream and those roads hold up better. Yeah, the, to, to your point, the Hammond Road definitely, the way that that road was built was not built correctly. I, I mean, as far as the paving in that went, that should have been, should have never been done. It was an add-on um, over the years is what it was for width. Um, so so those, those cracks that you're talking about, um, the, the the coal joints that he's he's talking about now would be across the road, not this running. Right, they're with not going to the run with the it, it's, it's, No, that, but that I mean, no matter even if you have two contractors yeah. doing it, it's going to be one going across. Is is what it would amount to. So and these two projects uh, are separated by a road, right? That they're keyed into, which the intersection itself will be mill will be a mill and fill. So the top core surface potentially could be one okay one complete hmm. pick two things on this okay. also now don't forget this is garfield and hammond mm -hmm. right we got five years for that intersection before we got a roundabout in that mm -hmm. intersection mm -hmm. the cold joint is going to fall within the limits of what we're going to remove which is why we have just a mill a quick two inches basically gone and replaced because we are going to be replacing that when we do a roundabout here. And so then again, we're going to have we're going to have two coal joints, one on each side of the intersection. Right. We'll have four. Excuse me. <laughs> we'll have four. Mm -hmm. And once the roundabout's done. Yeah. Once it's done. So, um, and, and then I'm going to finish up uh, kind of on, on Bill's point too. Um, you know, seal bids are done for a reason. Um, you know, rather than airing it all out in public beforehand, each company has their their deals that they're better at or worse at, and they know where to put money. Um, I mean, that's how it works. Um, uh, you know, it, so I, I guess I'm, I, I would certainly hate to think that we would have the reputation of doing sealed bids and then not accepting them, you know. Also, one of the contractors that had 
Express express interest interest up and wants yeah, to talk. Todd would like to speak yep. as well, part of this. Well, oh, okay, yep, and I told him they could, so let's go and, ahead. And, and I would, before he speaks, so he can hear, I'd like to hear some kind of reassurance that they've got a contract and it's not going to be a strike again if they've got that. If we got can't, that's, no, you can't, can't do that. You can't no, do no, that. No, no, that's, no, that. You no, can't no, do that. It's, it's, that's, that's no. not, you can't do that. If this was, if this was significant dollars difference, mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd be talking about it, but because it's an, a very minor number and because of the what specifically Elmer's is saying in terms of what's going to end up being, how they're going to design that road, that's what is a, is extremely attractive to, to me. That's why I did it. It but, wasn't based on we, past performance it, by any group because, or anything like that. As far as their contracts and that stuff with their employees and that, we, we can't, right. that's not for us to discuss. No, that's just and it's, it's, that's, we have... We have no control over that. They have no control over that because when the contract ends, no different than than us with our union. When the contract ends, it ends. Right. You know. But it, it's. Well, I just want so. to say this, this is it. Yeah. The ability to create a larger top course paving project and potentially to echelon pave and elimination eliminating cold joints and then at HMA top course that jumped out at me. Okay. That's that to me. That's a quality issue. That they're projecting making new force. Okay. That is why I'm interested oh. in this. Not oh, yep. I'm okay. not just I'm not That's... dissing anybody. Okay. I'm seeing yep. these guys still stood up and said we can do a little bit. Right. Okay. That's all. Yep. That's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and um let Todd talk. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Okay. Thanks for taking my time here. Just want to point out a few uh, things, and I've, I've listened to everyone's discussion here, and I have a few points to make. Reith Riley submitted bid, and uh, was read low and confirmed low as requested by the bid documents. A low bid and amount of one cent should be efficient to award the project. The county is not in business to choose winners and losers, only to request qualified bids by qualified contractors, and accept low bid as per the bid documents. Reese Riley is not only a qualified contractor, but a 100% employee owned contractor who has been in business for 104 years. A business does not operate for 104 years without guiding principles such as honesty, integrity, quality products and workmanship, safety and great customer service. It would be unethical for our organization to demand an owner to accept a bid that was not low and our, our organization would, would not allow such requests. The bidding of any project needs to carry honesty, integrity at all times. Not some of the time, not most times, but all times. A low bid and amount of one cent should be a sufficient to war the project. And <clears throat> with regards to the comment, paving an echelon or any wits, we're on M72 right now from Kalkaska towards Grayling we're paving 32 feet wide uh, with two pavers there. And it's, it's quite an impressive spread that we've put on for MDOT with uh, a lot of people and a lot of resources to get that project done in a timely fashion and an accelerated schedule, which they have. We, uh, we, we look forward to the opportunity in completing this project on time and on budget. And uh, we expect to do a great job for the county, as you should expect a great job from us. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. I think also wants to. Okay. I imagine. Yep. <laughs> it's, yep. Give him his turn. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, appreciate the conversation going back and forth. Um, cert certainly respect the bid process and everything associated with that. Um, our main concern was seeing at the start that uh, looked like they were concerned about procuring that culvert and they started talking about next year. So that was, that was one of our concerns. I think beyond that, what we can offer is, uh, I believe, a higher quality product by top coursing everything at the same time. Um, we also can offer the savings of testing and coordination with having to run two million plus dollar jobs right next to each other. So I think our reputation speaks for itself. 
Um, it's not an honesty thing. Uh, it's simply a, we can provide a better quality product and a better service to the motoring public. So we wanted you guys to be able to consider that and certainly respect any decision you make. So thank you. It does look like um, Todd would like to speak again. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, we're going to take the high road here and we're not going to tell that one contractor will do a better quality job than another. <clears throat> you know, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty low to say something like that. I would pet, put our test results and our quality workmanship against anybody in the state. Uh, we're a darn good country, company and we would not be in business for 104 years if we weren't. Thank you. All right, I'm going to lower everybody's hands and then let's okay. see if something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I think, I think we're there. I, I think we're, and, th and that's a little out of the norm to do that, but um, I, I think it was, I think it was good. So Carl, if you want, if you, we do have always more. I don't know. Well, no, not nobody else was on that other than those two. That was it. That's right. Okay. That's it. So thanks for talk at the end. If but, you allow me, I'd like to do a little uh, wisen process here. Okay. Would you withdraw your support? I was going to vote no at this point. Well, no, I'm asking <laughs> you, would you. Would you withdraw your support? Yes or no? Yes. I'll withdraw the motion. Okay. I'll withdraw my support. Now, here's where I want to go with it. Okay. I want this thing tabled. I want it tabled. And then I want more education from our engineering and our manager and I want our attorney. I want an opinion. I will not sit here and let anybody disparage this organization because we're looking out for the best interest of our constituents and it may not mean the lowest bid. And I want a legal opinion on that. I do not want anybody to disparage this board. And I heard that tonight and I will not let that stand. I want a legal opinion on this. So I'd like a table and I want to get educated on this. I'm going to take a motion and support to table it and a vote. If that's what Whatever like the process vote. is, that's what I would like to do. So I want, I want a legal opinion on it. I, and I know that I didn't want to see the barbs go in between the contractors, but we, you know, we wanted to hear some things. Right. But we, I think we need to be permitted to discuss oh, okay. what okay. what is in the best interest. Okay. And if it's just the cheapest, so when that can not always be the best. Right. Well, right. yeah, a little bit is not always best. But that's there's that's but no hold, hold on just hold on just a second here because because we're getting if, if we're gonna do this, if this is only gonna we're gonna have another meeting here in just a few days if this is gonna happen. So please uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can, it's because we don't have much time here. So Tonight, yes, we, sir, we might be able to get our answer from these two guys tonight, not have to talk for a legal, but I, I definitely want an opinion on this. Okay. Andy. So, Wayne, because I'm not an engineer and I don't understand cold joints and mesh, whatever the heck, and this and that, we're talking about a roundabout in five years? Correct. No matter what we do, is that going to make a big difference on the quality of that road surface over a five year period if there's cold joints or poor? Through the intersection, no. Through the rest of the of the project, you would have you could potentially have then cold joints uh, down the down the lane lines. So if what if one company versus the other does, is it going to be any difference on how they're? We're not requiring echelon paving. Um, that does not preclude either contractor from. Offering and, and performing it that way, and it's not in the bid. It's not, in a, and they're they're not saying neither one has said they were going to do that, or has one said in the uh, in writing. T. Elmers has has uh, told us that they would be doing echelon paving, which is where you have multiple rear equipment. Yes. Done, so it's, yep. that whole lane is done. And and okay. our cross section is between fifty nine to sixty three feet wide, so it's going to be multiple pavers across, which they did on South Airport. 
because of the left. Yes. My issue is quality, guys. It's all this is. Yep. It's about one is better than the other. And that I just what's happened in the past is just looking at it for face value for this amount of money. We're looking at a very seamless job. Okay. And that's what I'm looking at. So, so what's in step then, tell you that I get a bird up for under my sandal or under my saddle when somebody suggests that because we just don't take the lowest price that from somehow we're being disingenuous and dishonest and that kind of stuff. Then I want a legal opinion to say, what is our obligation? Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Uh, an equality issue. Uh, I mean, th that's a non-starter for me right here at this table. Basically, this is a job when it was bid, the specifications, the engineering is done by us or MDOT or whoever. They're handed to the contractors. They have no latitude. They don't get to decide how to do the job. It is ironclad, or it should be as close as it comes. And it's up to these guys behind us to make sure that whoever does it follows those specifications to the letter. So that's the only way you can have a hard bid job like this is if you have hard specifications, testing and inspections and follow up so that regardless of who does it, you have to assume very strongly and be very confident that the work's gonna be done the same way and the results are gonna be the same and the outcome's gonna be the same. If not, then whoever you got out there doing your inspections and your staff is not doing their job, it's period. So as, as far as the quality issues to me, when, it's, when we're talking about hard bid, uh, and, unless there's some really outgoing thing out there of something that's not here, um, it, to me, the, the, the possibility of a quality issue is, is, is not part of this decision at this point right now. Go ahead, Wayne. If I may, and this is, uh, this is in our adver advertisement for bids, and this has uh, been vetted by our legal counsel. This is the bottom paragraph. Allow me to read. The Grand Traverse County Road Commission reserves the right to reject any, all, or portions of the proposals received or to negotiate separately with any source whatsoever in any manner necessary to serve the best interest of the Grand Traverse County Road Commission and to waive any formality or technicality in the proposal in the interest of the Grand Traverse County Road Commission. That's Thank you. That's our legal opinion right there. there. That's, that's it. Right well, that, that's boilerplate that's on every MDOT contract. It's on 99% of the hard bid contracts out there. I've, I've read that and part of Jeff hundreds of times over. I would say that it is not in the best interest of the Grand Traverse County Road Commission to be seen as picking and choosing winners, um, regardless of the amount. That's a, a, a greater negativity than we we want to want to have, especially when we have a limited number of, of potential bidders in this part of the state. Anyway, two. Okay. So we we have two equally capable contractors. So what do you do? Well, you got to make your you got to make the decision in some way, and the hard bid spec job. Is the way it's done. So, oh, Bill, Bill, so then, just so I understand, um, you're saying doing doing the bid process that way, and it comes in, and you take the low bid if they meet the minimum specs of the project, right? Well, they're not minimum specs. They, they are the specs. specs. They, these specs. They are the specs. So specs of the project. So whatever the low bid is, we just rubber stamp it then as a board. Well, and exactly. unless there's some really compelling reason not to, yes. If, if they're a qualifying bidder, which they would not be bidder, qualifying. They if they're bidding for plans and specs. And, and we wouldn't, if, if this project wasn't going to happen until, until next year, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Because the one would happen and the other one would happen in a year. Right. So. Correct. So, I mean, there's the sanctity of the system. Either we're going to hard bid. And we're going to put the specs out there and we're going to require a rigid uh, adherence to those specs, but we're not. But we'll do everything design build. We'll go out and interview them so and say, hey, what do you got? What so do you suggest? Well, then the suggestion that we're picking winners and losers is that is that the board, if they make a decision, they're picking a winner and loser. And, and the bid process does that, takes it off of our responsibility. That should be inferred by 
just saying the system is there. It works. It's, 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 it's worked all over the state. It's been in effect. It, it's the system MDAT uses. It's the system government uses. Other road commissions. It's tried and true. It's out there. It's done in private industry. It's there. Yep. And it's there for a reason. If you're able to bid the job, if, if if either one of these companies were not held to a similar standard and were not looked at with the same level of esteem, then they wouldn't be allowed to bid, period. You put in your qualifications, you get accepted to bid, it's the ultimate in equality. <laughs> Maybe so. In effect, that's the way it's supposed to be. They're all supposed to be the same. Amen. So it's supposed to get shook out. That's why we have qualification statements. We go through all that paperwork. And we don't have a motion to We don't have both and that pre qualified. So these are both and that pre qualified contracts. Right. And that's yeah, the key. Yeah. That's how we select our yeah, that's, that's, that's not an issue. Nobody's, not nobody's questioning the quality. So if you take that out of the equation, if everything else is equal, how do you make a decision? I, I, I think it's the nuances. I mean, it's just the nuances. It's like, you know, whether cold joint or time, it's it's the little things that aren't exactly expressed in the, in the bid packet. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, we've worked with, we've worked with Elmer's uh, and we've had good results. We've worked with Reef Rally, we've had good results. Um, you know, in, in, in my experience, my personal experience with the board, the times that we've worked with either of those contractors, I, I was most pleased, I, and I, I get all of the, the happy, feel-good moments from from their work on, on South Airport Road in particular. Um, they did it. Reef Riley, of course, has done nice work. In, you know, the, the three mile area and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm ambivalent. Somebody makes a motion. We're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna vote. With that motion, because a absolutely not going to be held to you know we do have a we can decide what we decide uh, uh, stipulation okay. in, in the bid packet, but but it's so close that this this is a hard. To, I wish they were further away. I wish they I wish they were a hundred thousand dollars away. It'd make it a lot easier, you know. Not here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You're on today. <laughs> No, I, I, you know, in effect, a lot of these things could have, should have, would have. Yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty. From, from an automatic standpoint, we should be yeah. going with three. Hindsight's twenty twenty. All of these, all of these, yeah, all yeah. Of these things could have been addressed. The, the paving of echelon, the cold joints in between, those could have been, uh, yeah, you know, pre bid clarifications and and put out with, uh, you know, with responses. Uh, now, you know, I, and I just step back. I mean, if Reef Riley says, "Oh, well, we're a little bid by this few dollars." But we can't guarantee we'll get the culvert pipe. Well, okay. There's compelling reason to right. make a choice. Right. But they said we can get That's it. That's off the yeah. table. There's no longer a compelling reason. There was a deal for the lake. Oh yeah. To that but point. then we needed to be and, sure. Yeah. We, any more than we can go in and ask them about their labor problems. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's off the table. That's all. Right. So you know, I mean, if you put white out here, and would never show us these, and if you flip them around. My response would be the same. I mean, you know, Elmer's is an outstanding company. Reith and Riley's an outstanding company. They've done a lot of good for the community and, and businesses and good for them. And it's good for us that we've got two top-notch companies here uh, and all that. I mean, on a personal note, five years ago when I built my house, I paid my driveway, okay? I got a price from several, several paving contractors. <laughs> Elmer's did paving for me. It was just a driveway. My own personal. It was my money. I got to choose. They were a few hundred bucks more. I chose them because they were. I felt they were the better option. They could get there a couple weeks sooner, uh, and, I, and I had a lot better confidence. There. So, and that, but that was my money. So I could spend it however I wanted, uh, and 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 did it. So all that's you know neither here nor there. This, this is a situation instead of we're a governmental entity. These are government dollars. There's a process. It's a process that's old and well used. Everybody in the state uses it, public and private. And, and, and I think to, to, to step away from that, unless there's a real compelling reason, and I have not one her to me, it is compelling enough to uh, sully the process. I'd like to make a motion. Yeah, I just heard the hand story. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion we enter, uh, enter award the contract to Reith Riley 
for the Hammond Road bid from Garfield to Town Line for $1,391,408.47. Um, more or less. I'll support. <laughs> I was going to say, Bill, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, you better support the identification. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Well, I just wanted me to feel like I was hanging out there for a little bit. I just hope he was done. Yeah. Motion by Andy and supported by Bill to accept the um, bid from Reith Riley. Um, per staff recommendation. Per staff recommendation. So any further discussion? For nine years, I've been on this board. For nine years, I've not done things in my mind because that's the way we've always done it. And I appreciate what you're saying, Bill. The standard is set, okay? But I look at our road commission as breaking standards all the time. We've done it with countless things. And I mean, I've just looked at it from a quality perspective in terms of what they offered. If that line wasn't in there about what they could do, then I, then there wouldn't have been any decision whatsoever, other than just going with the sealed bed the lowest. But because they come right out and put it in writing that what they're going to do, and that to me was significant enough for that that few dollars to to. Do it. And, to, and to be concerned that that if we don't do this particular deal and we have two providers and then we're only going to have one, I believe in supply and demand. And if one leaves, somebody's going to fill the void. So I'm not going to help hostage to it. So I'm going to vote no on this. There's just no way. And when people ask me why, I will tell them why. Are we all set? This definitely is a roll call. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Merrick? Yes. McKellar? No. Bowser? Yes. Gilman? Yes. Brown? Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, Anna Bond, is that how I say that? Yes. Anna Bond. You earned it tonight. <laughs> um, and let's, let's make a couple of things here just uh, to be 100% clear on this. Um, I'm actually not at, I'm going to ask you for approval tonight. There's a couple of other issues that we're still working out with the security system in coordination with our hardware. And I'm more comfortable right now with the hardware issues and getting our servers and everything. And I want to hold off on this until I'm positive that everything else that we have coming in here is going to be able to help and tie into all of this stuff that we have going on. So, but I do want to go over some highlights of it so that everybody is aware of what we are talking about here. Um, what happened in the last year is we've had two road commissions up in the north that have been broken into. And in both cases, their losses exceeded $100,000, mainly in tools, Oof. generators, and that type of thing. Okay. When Chris have told us we needed to evaluate our facilities for security to assure that we had something in place better than what we currently have, so that we could turn around and if we had problems, we'd be able to ad identify who's coming and who's going. So. What we did, we put together a package here, and this was only going to be for the access now, and we were going to come back next month for the IP camera setup anyway, but we'll put it all together for next month. What we're looking to do is put in access card at both of the front doors, the doors that lead to the hallways, the doors that the people, the field crew comes in, the gate that goes through into the back, putting a mechanical gate on the front. We now have power to the back gate, so we can put a mechanical gate in the back because we lent land to the people that are working for TCLP. They did the bore for us at no charge to get the power out there. That's so that good. turns out to be good. That's we have enough power for that and our wash bay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, um, gone. Dang it. 
Uh, we, we've been looking at a lot of different companies and Anavon did give us a solution for it. Um, but we want to make sure that everything we have for this is going to work together. Some of the issues we've had in the past is simply the fact that the door systems we have now, we do have some push buttons take forever to program. Every time we have a change in personnel, it takes Dan an hour and change to come up and sit here at each one while it cycles through all these codes to remove old and put in new, remove old and put in new, and he's got to do it to each one. The system we're looking at doing is going to be able to control all. It's also going to connect to our timekeeping so that rather than the, the folks out back having to come in, gather around the computers and wait while they can log in, punch in, they're going to be able to swipe their card past the time card reader which will then hopefully be able to tie into our asset management system, which will tie, you know, who's here and then start the tracking of their time for the day so that we know where they are throughout the day and where we're charging time is accurate. The other issue we have is routinely we let contractors who are working for us use the back gate to come in to store their materials. And what they do is they daisy chain padlocks. And I can't count the number of times that Dan has called and said, hey, are you still <laughs> near the office? And uh, can somebody unlock the gate? Because inevitably somebody misses the whole idea of the daisy chain and they chain lock the oh, yeah. fence, the fence, or yeah. uh, uh, chains the and chains. chain instead. Yeah. And so we end up with people stuck in the back that can't get out. <laughs> so we need to look at something that's gonna get our vehicles in we don't want to put up some great big arm that's going to have three different heights of readers. So it would be something that as our vehicles drive up, it would activate the door, the gate would open, but other people would have to have a card. We would sell them the card for the time that they're using it. And when they're done, we just deactivate them and it'd be an instant system. The other, the other thing we want to make sure is this is able to connect between here and Kingsley. So the same access applies to all of our employees when we get down. Teams. So on, on that, if I'm a contractor, and I have a card. Mm -hmm. Can we control the time that that card, that card is work? So they can, can only be, they should only be here between eight and five. They shouldn't be here at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we can control it a hundred percent, and so, it tracks every time that vehicle comes mm -hmm. in the gate. It tells us, you know, even if they don't make it in because they're restricted, it says somebody tried this card oh. at four o'clock in the morning to get in. So that's one of the thing, ways that you're going to have to control. That's pretty cool. Uh, Contractors from having some uh, rope. Out of curiosity, has, has M. Chris, have they uh, suggested or offered any kind of grant towards this at all? Because I've seen it before. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> it happened with the county. Mitigation of yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, for them, it, 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 it's potential savings. Yeah. Yeah. And if not, would you? We can have. <laughs> well, yeah. basically, what, what and, but and he, Bill can correct me if I'm wrong, but we usually get that rebate when they don't have planes in that. Yes, year, oh, there's that, there's that. So yeah, that's yeah. that's the, when they don't have the payout, and they're you, you know it's there's, there's lesser there's planes out there, and it's through the township. Going to get my comments. So. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you look <laughs> under. <laughs> Let me do that, Bill. Sorry. The whole show just got 15 minutes shorter. <laughs> yeah. well, well, <laughs> so effectively, what we have to is then we have a tool crib out back that we lock, and it would then we'd know who's going into the tool crib at each time, and we would restrict who can get into different areas of the shop, even because right now we don't let just anybody go into the parts room. Marco's in the parts room, Dan goes in the parts room. Paul goes in the parts room. Nobody else goes into the parts room. So, you know, just to, <laughs> and it's also, you know, and the problem we have too is we want to have, we're going to get us to a point where we have cameras because, you know, we expect these mechanics to have their own tools here and they could be $40,000 of tools that they yeah. have on our property. Mm -hmm. And we are insuring them now so that their deductibles and everything are covered by us if they're taken from us. But it's still something that, you know, it'd be nice to have this type of security. And it also then gives the ability for Dan, if somebody calls up and says, hey, I need to get in, I'm coming in early, he can do it on his phone or wherever to get people in. So um, the information you have here, while it is 
fairly relevant. Um, we are going to be tweaking and making sure it works with our new IT system and we can get the communication that we need to have from that timekeeping moving through and Larry and I will be talking about that here next. Okay, so at this point, that's the basics of what we're looking at. And I'm going to set that one aside for this week. So, well, some, it, it sounds like you're going to get it up to speed where, you know, I mean, in this day and age, it's yeah. definitely it, it's yeah. reality, not, a, yeah. not and it's, it's, a, it's a win, not an if. Yeah, and it's a, it's a matter of, you know, us being able to have better control of our facility and know, you know, even if the people aren't getting in, but they're trying to get into areas that they're not supposed to be. We have a record of that also. That's it. So are we are we just this is updates. So security updates though. If there's we issue. have we have those number pads now that we're gonna get rid of. I'm talking I'm talking about though paying for it. You need an approval or is this part of something that's already in the budget that it's it's budgeted, but we're not asking for an approval right now because we'll get total numbers better checked once we have an idea on this if it's in the when it, if it's in the budget though have we allocated monies for this specific stuff therefore you don't need to ask for it it's the amount of money being spent though isn't it yeah yeah it's, it, we would budget okay. one it's in the budget the and the dollar amounts are there but it's definitely in excess of what well, my it's over here authority. 15, Authority, so. well, once they have the dollar it's amount, under, we just you're thirty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so so they little pieces. Yeah. Well, yeah. Don't be telling them that. Don't no. Break that up. <laughs> so suddenly they got a okay. bill spent a hundred thousand. So, <laughs> so that's kind of where we stand on that, and it is a matter. You know, it's just right now we need to just pull back a little bit because it took us a long time to pull together the information on this massive project that we have, which is an efficiency project for us. Um, I hopefully everybody had a chance to at least go through this process uh, or this memo here. We did sit down, we looked at three companies that we felt had at least on paper, the capability to deal with the type of things we need to track and they, the efficiencies we need to start being able to recognize by seeing where we're having these trends of continuous repair these things where we're seeing you know why are we here at this location five times a year and also to check and see where we're really recognizing advancements in our facility and our efficiencies so that we can determine better are we best suited to do this or are we better off contracting this out? So tracking all of that and getting actual real costs, and then also being able to take all of our stuff and have it in a true asset management database that can start spitting out these numbers as we generate more and more data and start seeing where we have the setup to say, okay, this project here because this building needs to be replaced on a fairly repetitive basis, as we noticed with the roof. You know, how long do doors last? How long do air conditioners last? How long do we have on an elevator? And to track, and to track when inspections are done, to track our culverts. Everything we are responsible for will be tracked through this. And these three companies, all in paper, started out looking like they all had the potential. Um, for field use, the first one we looked at was Elements XS, and it definitely was the easiest to use for our field guys um, because they had just a simple thing where you'd click on the map exactly where you were, and it would just keep adding work orders. Now, that made it very easy, and it was a good look for them. And the fact that you, you know people could have an online access to it, both commissioners and general public to see where we've been historically, what type of work's been done, tracking what work we've done over the last eight years, nine years. It had a good feel for it. It was easy to use for those people and the online access was good. The problem we had with this, it just did not have the customizable ends that we need for to be able to really track in enough detail the types of things we're trying to work out. 
And the back end of it was pretty basic. And we would just not have the muscle that we need to deal with 1,300 miles of road and, you know, 250 locations of guardrail and, you know, hundreds of thousands of feet of pavement markings. So we looked at that one first. We looked at Cartograph second. Cartograph was by far the least user friendly for the field guys. Um, it was very time consuming for them to enter a work order. And we figure if it's time consuming for them, they're going to skip steps or they're not going to use it. So we needed to make sure that we had something there that they could use. Um, and it really wasn't quite as customizable as our last one. CityWorks, it definitely had a lot more power than the Elements XS. When we got to CityWorks, its field usability right out of the box isn't that much farther behind Elements. Um, and Larry's pretty comfortable building some customizable front ends for us in ESRI products, the GIS, so that we can turn around and use some of his customized things to kind of short circuit around these clunkier things, especially with potholes where people are, you know, they, they're entering hundreds of potholes a day. If they're talking about taking down trees, it's 10 a day. It's not a big deal to create a work order for, you know, one tree every 45 minutes. But when you're doing 250 potholes, we would create, we would have that customized front end for it. And the back end is very, very powerful. They have a lot of capabilities, a lot of dashboards that come automatically with it. And it's usually compatible with 90% of the types of things that we're going to want. It's going to be able to use our automated vehicle location. It's going to be able to tie in to our financial system. We're going to find, you know, that overall it's a fine tuned uh, operation. It's going to take a while for us to get 100% up to speed with this. The other nice thing, though, with CityWorks is for its online access, they have a very easily customizable front end for us to be able to use to track citizen requests. So if we want to start having people have the ability to go out and field, you know, some citizens walking their dog and they see a tree branch down, they got a phone take a picture of it. As long as they've left the geotagging information on the phone, you can strip that off and find out where they are. Or they can say here, right here, it's on this map. This is where I saw this tree branch down black and part of the road. And that type of thing, based on all of the work order flows that we have that we will be able to set up, will customize how, who it gets routed to, how there's, what priority level it is, and then when they do the work, it will respond back to the homeowner or citizen and say, hey, this has been resolved. This is what we do, did to fix it. If you still have any questions or this is not 100% what you were talking about, call us back. So it's got that capability built in. So on that, if, we, if there's a pothole reported at this spot mm -hmm. and we go back and we repair that pothole and it closes out, is that record going to be stored forever? Or, or is that until we decide it's no longer valuable? So if, to if us. every so every six months that same place is getting a pothole, we're going to get a record. And yes, you're going to be able to look at it back and go, we're we're repairing potholes in this section of road right. once we, a week. We're out there doing right. that. And so for like say for potholes, this is an, the example we would use for potholes. We will keep the records of all the potholes that occurred on this road until this road is no longer this road and it's been resurfaced. Then you wipe out all the former records because they don't apply right. anymore. Right. So those go away and you start a new record. But so it. that's a good way for the, the smaller projects. We're looking, there's a hundred exactly. yard section that we're always. From a statistical analysis thing, I think this makes a hell of a lot of sense because then you can look at, at time between repairs. Uh, you know, so we have durability of the materials that we use. And obviously that's something that when we repair it, we can note the materials we're using, right? And then if we need to change or, or adjust something, I mean, this 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 is fantastic for what it costs. This uh, this this could really save us a lot of time and effort uh, down the road, I think. Yeah, and there's a lot of this. And that, were you saying the scores? The store. Oh, this we, we could track what type of materials. Yeah, yeah our, there's a storeroom store included in this, so that when the guys leave, they pick up material 
at Elmer's and they're going to use it. They're going to say, okay, I've got this much. I took in this much in my truck and they're going to use it. We know exactly how much they used that day and where it was used. Same thing with potholes. If we're using cold patch out of our stockpile, it's going to track how much cold patch have we used? Where was it used? It's going to say, okay, we were on primaries in East Bay Township and we spent the entire day out there and we did potholes. We did 250 potholes and we used five tons of cold patch. So it's going to track every type of material we use. It's also going to hook up to our snow plows so that we can see, and this is still out a little ways, but so that we can see how much time did they spend with the spreader on? How much material were they spreading while that spreader was on? Was it straight salt? Was it two to one? Was it five to one? And it's going to tell us, which is going to make his life a lot happier, it's going to tell us roughly how much material that are we using and when do we need to start looking at reordering all these things. So it's going to track you know, the inventory for everything as well. It's also got something that we're already working with Kylie and Ron on to take signals into account. And so she's going to help us build the end for her signals so that she can be tracking all her signal stuff. So overall, the dispatching of crews is going to drastically increase too, because there is a feature in Esri, correct? That has the efficient routes. Yeah, that's Esri, yep. Yeah, so yep. in our GIS, he's going to be able to set it up so that they say, okay, you've got these 12 requests. This is your most efficient route to go to get between all these. And it will be built by the machine. It'll say, here you go, follow this order and go out and do your potholes or do your tree limbs or do your whatever it is this is the route you should be taking to address these issues so a lot of stuff that right now you know you give them a list they're like well i don't even know where that road is they put it off till the end and then they realize they had already went past it that day so if if the guy's out on the road doing a uh, filling pothole and a citizen go call, stops them and goes there's one right over here and it's off of that route is they going to send an alert to us? Are we going to know? Are we going to? Are we they can, that we can have it at that point. The guys can just do it. But if something comes in, and it comes in, and you know somebody's on the front desk, and they get that request, whoever's assigned the potholes that day, it's going to go right to Rick, and Rick's going to send it to them and say, "Here, if you're in this, when you're in this area, because he can look then and see where every truck is, mm -hmm. and just say, okay, that person's closest, fill that pothole." Because we got three pothole patching crews out. So where this one's close, he's going to be crossing by it. He can pick it up. I, I, I guess one, I, a little concern I have is a whole big brother watching, you know, the, the staff feeling that we're, we're watching them too closely. We're, why did you stop here for 15 minutes? And that's and it should not, have been five minutes. I mean, right. how can I, we, we've worked really hard to get morale up. Right. And I and hate to see them get the feeling that maybe. Right. And that's what, not what we're what our intention is, and we will make that very clear. Because when I we've already at, started that whole discussion of we aren't looking to get you in trouble with this software. We're interested in trying to find where we have efficiencies that can be a thing. Because when I worked at Home Depot, we got cameras put in and we were told it's not to watch staff. Five years later it was to watch staff. Yeah. Do you have some numbers you wanted to look at? <laughs> yeah. I just because we could be here until midnight. <laughs> so that's the art view. That's the art view in the GIS. Um, and if you have any questions about the art view or the GIS portion of it, um, feel free. Otherwise, that did you guys did you give them the actual cost sheet too? Okay. So if we look at the cost sheet here, City Works with storeroom, we originally budgeted uh, about a hundred thousand dollars for the total of all the City Works issues. Um, because Larry has talked to them and expressed enough knowledge about it, he's going to be able to join their jumpstart program and he'll be taking over a lot of the contracted costs for implementation. So we're at 46.6, which is the setup cost for it. And then we'll start out at a $20,000 for the first year ish until we start bringing more stuff online. Eventually it's gonna be $40,000 a year for the software um, with unlimited access to it by all the people. 
you know, commissioners, the citizens can all go out and look at it. We have the ArcGIS, which we originally budgeted at 60,000. It did come in a little higher at 89, but that's because a lot of the costs that we originally had, I think, in the city works application are sort of pushed into the GIS portion for the software. Um, and then there's the set, the safe software at the bottom, which is something that's going to allow and Larry to go ahead. Well, th what this does is it looks in the back of the SQL server databases and it allows two databases to talk to each other instantaneously. So when we get that information from where these guys are at, we can push it back over to our precision software, which is our basically where we keep our um, time keeping and, and that kind of stuff. So this will automate that uh, push to the other database. Okay. So, and that one was an additional charge um, and that was uh, 20,230. So I have three software packages listed here that I need. One is 46.6, which is for the CityWorks front end and storeroom. One is the 89650, which is for um, ArcGIS. And um, that's an Esri product. That's pretty much the standard for everybody right now for GIS related software, they are the biggest. They are originally developed specifically for these types of applications. And then the safe software of $20,230, um, which is uh, brings us in to the three software packages that we need to have. Now, the next one is the running of this. Now, these are highly intensive applications they need some separate servers they need to be powerful servers they can't just be you know a laptop computer or a desktop computer these are some big servers and this is for the purchase of five new servers in addition to replacing or adding on the gis to one server cityworks to one server it's going to replace our entire application environment and it's going to connect to a mass storage unit so that, and that is the uh, Dell SAN for unified storage. That's going to be our storage unit for storing all the videos we take now because we have that, that gator that runs for surveying and records 360 degrees up and down roads before we start and after we're done. It's going to take care of all of that type of video data. It's also going to take care of all of the rest of the data that we generate here, our CAD files and everything else. Um, and then the last server that's in this group, there's what we have, they call a development server that you start using things with so that you know you're not going to bring your whole system down and make sure it's set up before you push it into the new environment. And it can also be used as the next fallback server if anything happens to anything else. So we got five servers. We have um, the racks and the miscellaneous. And we have, are we are waiting on a, uh, actual final price for SQL Server, but these are all government prices. So for government prices for the server, the racks, the Dell storage unit, and SQL Server, those are all going to be government prices. That's the best we can do. And then we're asking for the 5000 for OLAR to assemble these servers, set up the back end so that all five servers communicate properly, and are hooked up to the network so that everybody has access to them with the appropriate permissions. Okay, you said SQL Server, but I don't see that on here. That's an estimate right now because there's two different versions of SQL well, there's Server. No, there's no number. Yeah, you don't see, right, I'm sorry, did they? SQL Server, there's no number. Blind. Yeah, it's right, that's an estimate right now, 5,000. No, 5,000, oh, all water. But, no, but, but under SQL, that's right. We don't have the final price for SQL Server yet. So it should be, it should just say SQL Server and then a blank. It is. Yeah. Right, because that's we don't have the actual that's price the, yet. Yeah, that's, that's the question. question. It's about $5,000 is what our estimate is on that. All right. So but we aren't positive. I mean, it might be 6,500. It might be 3,900. It depends on how it needs to be set up for us. But that would be operating on the servers that, on the servers servers that we're going to be being built here, right? So I then need an, um, uh, an authorization to spend the 93, 475, 49 for the hardware 
plus the five thousand dollars. So it'll be ninety-eight thousand four seventy-five more or less. There may be because of that software one. Um, that brings us into the two forty-nine nine fifty-five forty-nine for the total costs. Plus, and when you plus, add that five thousand, you're at two fifty-four. We had budgeted for this project two hundred forty-five thousand. So we're going to be about ten thousand over the original budget of what we put before you for December. So, so can we go talk about this? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I can tell you right now on the hardware, because you're getting government pricing, those are hard, you know, just, you know, and in terms of the software uh, for uh, ArcGIS, um, you know, I, I can tell you guys, there's two areas that are soft underbellies here. If you look at the initial cost, uh, software for ArcGIS, look down at implementation and follow up support, the 26, that's a soft number. And um, in the 40 above for CityWorks, the 46.6, that's also a soft number. Um, so, your, if I'm understanding this right, this is their cost for their application to be set up on their system or is it cloud based or what? It's all on our system, on, on premise. Here. Okay. So, so much of this, how do I want to explain this, guys? It's subjective. Okay. And those numbers are almost, you know, like implementation. They're recovering their staff time, they're recovering, you know, to, to set it up. They make their money, though, on that annual, the maintenance, mm -hmm. okay? But they're always going to knock you up front for these initial costs for implementation, which is the cost of doing business. So, where the annual cost to maintain the program are, are pretty well set, okay? But the implementation up front, they've already done this so many times, they've done this enough that there's just a lot of fluff in that. Well, you're and buying the software with a licensing agreement. Right, but in there's implementation costs. And those are the ones that you've got to look at and say, you know what, you're gonna make money Year after year after year on this program, well, this, but you got to get us this client first. So you negotiate them on the implementation side of it, and a lot of times they're going to go down. And the reason they're going to go down is they know that they're not going to make all their money on that one hit wonder. They're going to make money on the maintenance over the next decade or 20 years of yeah. winning. So there, that's soft where the where you've got to have them for that annual fee for running the program, but that implementation. You've got to look at that and, and, and consider going back to them and, and having them sharpen the pencil on the implementation. Costs. Well, I can tell you on CityWorks, that's as low as you're going to get. That's just it. Because they've already cut 60000 from one end so, because so, he's so, going to do it. So you, guys, so you guys have, okay, so let's back to train up even further. Okay, before we're seeing these numbers tonight, you guys have gone through the dance with them already. Yes, yeah, we met with we them. Know. We, we met know. with them twice as a huge group. Mm -hmm. That's okay. everybody that's going to be using the software. Your conversation back and, and yes, forth. He's, he's been down. knocking them down because he says, "Oh, I can do that," and they're knocking off. So right. and I can do this, so, so they're these, knocking off. These are net numbers, okay? Yes, that's what we need to know. We need to know that you guys have negotiated yes. that. You know you're taking some of that off, right? right. I, I've okay. talked to them and I've told them my expertise or, or my area that I can really, you know, chop that up a little bit. And they've they've come down dramatically. Right. Um, there was a time when they were uh, saying, "Go get a consultant for sixty thousand dollars." After speaking to them, they said, "Hey, we know that you have the ability to do this. You've implemented these these things before. You know, we're just going to say." We're going to do a jump start with you. We're going to train you and help you implement so you know how to do it and then take off from there. Right. So if you guys have done that, yeah. then I know that yeah, that's, we, we have, we have so, literally chopped, chunked. Well, we were Bay, Bay County. Yeah, Bay County implemented this. 
and their implementation costs for Bay County were like 130,000. Okay. Well, and, and then we I just chop. I, I can see where we're we're having our guy do that because I mean basically we're buying the software for for 6600 bucks and they're charging us $40,000 a year for licensing. I mean that's that's what this looks like. They're saying, "Okay, we trust you can make it happen. You can configure it. You can you can put it on the server just fine." And that's where we're at. So Are you surprised though that this isn't a cloud base that they have to They have a cloud base do. option. They have a cloud base. The problem with the cloud base is you don't have that access to your data to start melding it into precision. Yeah. And that hard, that hard connection for him, and I'll let him go into more detail. They don't, they just, they don't, their interface won't uh, integrate then. You really have to, you kind of have to open up your firewalls a little bit to get from the cloud back to your premise. So it's it's best to, you know, be on premise and then that way these databases can talk to each other with that other piece of software, that safe software. Speed wise, this is. Oh, it's huge speed, speed wise. Okay. Okay. Yes, they have cloud base. Yeah. But I don't trust and them. the cost, the cost overall is not much of a savings in that cloud base, especially not for the level of implementation that we want to accomplish. They going in? Yes, they're good. Yeah, they're, all of their things will be remote to implement for sure. So if there's a problem, like in the cloud, they can go in and fix it. Absolutely. They don't even tell you well, they fix it. Um, um, via, in yeah. this, they can, you, you get yeah. access to the remote yeah. end and they, they fix it. And this includes, like for, for this, this is all updates so, to life, you know, as they make changes. I used CityWorks in Ann Arbor and fair disclosure here. Well, I, I used it for- we we're looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I used it for 18 years, okay? And it was, it's amazing. We actually built our own interfaces. CityWorks did a special on what we had come up with and then bought the interfaces from us. So- and Phil's, Phil's precision application will We'll get there. Oh, it's going to take time. Bay County is you right. know, just waiting in the wings because um, we're going to see what you do so they can copy you. Right? Yeah, they, that's they, they, they're, they're so they don't have much of it. They, they, yeah, they want to do it. They just that's don't right. technology. Let's turn it into a profit center. <laughs> I, I, I'd, make, I'd make the motion that we that we authorize the purchase of uh, for the licensing of City Works at a, co at a cost of uh, initial cost of forty six thousand six hundred. Uh, with along with the annual costs uh, to, to follow uh, for forty thousand dollars a year support. Most of my Jason supported by Andy uh, to purchase the uh, city works option. So this is Jason, like what we did with Tavo, where we were able to use our IT department too. Yeah. Yeah. Any further discussions? No. Roll call. McKellar? Yes. Mauser? Yes. Neilman? Yes. Merrick? Yes. Brown? Yes. So we have the hardware. No, the software, software next is for hardware GIS okay. through BSRI. that we approve the software purchase uh, as listed for a total of initial costs of $89,650 with the annual cost to follow of $18,050 a year. Or Motion by Jason, supported by Andy. To just, purchase. just briefly, can you explain the reference to working with the county to drive this cost down. There was some reference to that. We uh, we entered a, a with Grand Traverse County. We are using and trading data or sharing data amongst each other. So so we will data. get the starting information from that to help us build. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, again. Supported by Andy um, to purchase the software um, as presented for $89,650 up front and an annual cost of $18,050. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Tyler. Tyler? 
Yes. Gilman. Yes. Merrick. Yes. McKellar. Yes. Yes. All right, that brings us to the hardware. Authorize the purchase. We to authorize the purchase of the server. This this monster nuclear device. <laughs> uh, uh, and and related equipment for a total of ninety eight thousand four hundred and seventy five dollars. Uh, like more or less. Money. More more or less. Thank you. I'll support. Okay. What kind of server is it? These are <laughs> five <laughs> servers. No, is it, what? No, it says Siegel? under server. Under server for sixty thousand nine hundred sixty nine dollars fifty cents. No, that's no. Oh, that's five physical servers. What are they? HP. They're Dell's. What's the warranty? I can go back and look if you want me to, but I know there's. We we pay. We're paying extra for the longer term one. Let me see if I've got it on this one. Um, yeah. Basic service business hours five day five days a week for ten hours next business day on site hardware warranty repair labor and materials five years five years that's all that yeah okay. um, so how much space oh, is this going to take up thirteen racks well <laughs> I don't know how big a rack of servers is. Yeah, we'll have one rack. It's going to be this at least. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at that cabinet right behind you. They're just cards. So yeah. You know, yeah. these are the oh, these are the full. These are full. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, the blades are too expensive for us. Oh, we okay. looked at it. All right. All right. All right. You'd be adding another one to the beginning. Oh, no, we, have, we have we have a this. It's got the light right climate and got the right. We're, we're not going to end up basement. Basement with cool. the, the former crow's nest for Dan. Up top in the shop is going to go down there, and it will be separately air conditioned right. yeah. on se two separate circuits going into that. So building. now we got another big power drain coming. Well, <laughs> no, it's just clean. Do we have just 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 to follow up though? Do we have like a leeward or something? I mean, a big uh, backup uh, uh, power supply. Uh, we have APSs. Um, built into this cost okay. to get them through for five minutes and by then our generators are running okay and our generators will run through that same power filter so that you don't have any wacky spikes to do damage to our server right cool. so we're comfortable with the power that we're going to have the power we're not going to have issues like to do with another project no where this we're going to all these are come not, back these are, these are these Technically, all five servers could run on a 30 amp service with but the battery back. It's got to be the clean else. power. It's got to be, and yeah. that's, that's and not we're going to run it where and, we're it. Right. And we're going to run it through, and the whole room is going to be air conditioned. And the humidity and all that's not going to be an issue for them. We got that all, all taken care of. Okay. So, if we're going to hold it on our service, do we have some type of a hot site with them that they can hold some of this? Or are we? breaking that up within our server so that if we get a failure in one that that's we've the, not well is there redundancy here that's the dell sand and it's going to run on a raid 10 which is duplication of everything across multiple hard drives that's freaking awesome is so yeah. if a hard drive dies you literally pull it out set it aside put a new one in and within a couple hours it's, that new one has been rewritten to be taking over the other piece. So, so we don't have, we, we will not be at risk of losing our no. uh, built up uh, data in there right. over time. That's right part. As well as the fact that we will be backing this up elsewhere also. So that's the hot We have so, Kingsley. Yeah. All right, so this building, for whatever reason, has a fire. Yeah. And uh, wash bay. it becomes a flood down so, there from right. the sprinklers. Everything will be also backed up to Kingsley once Kingsley is built. Okay, motion by Jason. Second. <laughs> Seconded by Mark uh, to purchase the hardware for um, the hardware of the server. Um, for eighty nine thousand four ninety eight thousand ninety eight excuse me ninety eight thousand four seventy five forty nine. Uh, plus or minus. Gilman? Yep. Merrick? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Mauser? Yes. Brown? Yes. 
And then safe software is the only one that's left. And this is what makes it so we we, that we can talk between, between everything. Stuff. No, this is so we can talk between every single piece of software that we have here on premises. So it will be able to help us communicate with precision, with road sock, with the okay. original old software that will still be running a couple of our signals. Everything will be tied together so that everything can talk together and we can get information. It's kind of like a translator. Of okay. Yeah, it runs to connect in the background. Sorry. Make the motion that we uh, approve the safe software FME for $20,230 initial cost and annual cost of $3,470. Yeah. Three thousand four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, motion by Mark, supported by Jason, uh, to purchase the soft safe, the safe software FME uh, for a price of initial price of twenty thousand two hundred and thirty dollars, with an annual cost of three thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. Any further, Kylie. Mary. Yes. McKellar. Yes. Nowser. Yes. Gilman? Yes. Brad. Yes. I think that did the total for you there, yes. Brad. That's okay. everything I need for okay. tonight. Okay. Can I ask a real quick question here? Sure. Go ahead, Mark. I know, you know we just authorized purchase of this, and over the probably this last quarter is when you guys are going to ramp all this up, okay? When, though, can you? prove out some of this. I mean, when it comes to the board, are you talking at the end of the first quarter, you can start showing us we're going to be some of these improvements. Show time. And, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, for full implementation, you're looking at six months to seven months, maybe, to get everything built and have all these new interfaces. Built. So by the second quarter, we're going to start seeing some. You're going to be able to see how it works. The data may not be 100% there because we're not going to take on every single operation we do all at once. But we're going to start out with potholes and ditching so that the guys can get used to doing it and we can error check and make sure. And then we'll expand into culvert work with engineering and we're going to expand into guardrails and we're going to expand into signals. And how with the order of implementation, we're not 100% sure of yet. It really depends on how quickly field crews take to this and start getting comfortable with the use of it. And we're sure that they like the format that we have our front ends with so that we don't build, you know, 10 front ends that they just can't figure out. And so, you know, we'll start having our first bits of data in that time frame, And then, you know, every couple of months we'll have even more data. And then you start seeing the trends. I mean, you're probably looking at a year before you can really truly assess trends of what's happening cost-wise. So, so did you do some form of pro? Sorry, Carol, I'm gonna start you. No, that's all right. This, did you do some form of a, a pro forma on this to know that our ROI on this is going to be returned at like three years or five years through efficiencies? Like, are we going to save a couple of FTEs? Is it you know? I don't necessarily know that we will save an FTE, it's it's basically the cost of it. Didn't you figure the cost of it annually is going to be effectively one FTE? Yeah, you know, when we looked at the annual cost was about one full time equivalent, but it's getting the data, you know, no one getting something that'll go with the cost. I mean, I can track costs all day long, but this is gonna tell us what we actually did for those costs, well, and where we did it. Ultimately, though, this is to be an efficiency. And, and it's going to be using our asset management plans. We're going to have all this, you know, data and ratings. And I would think within 36 months from, say, the first of the year, that we should be able to get some idea to road commission that, you know, that we're recouping this investment. Yeah, and, that's, and, it, and it's depending on the operation there's going to be longer and shorter times. Like for us to say, you know, it's going to make this much of a difference in this potholes could be over the course of one year, simply because we do so many potholes, we know where they're going. We can see how long it's taking us to put out the material. And we can do an analysis on that. But to say like, okay, is it making our 
operations for tree removal, that may take three years. So it's going to, but we will start, we will start producing quarterly metrics for the board with this, and we will start producing dashboards for the website as soon as we have data that can populate those right, dashboards. So what I want to avoid here, though, is that, great, we're amassing all this data, and we're centralizing it, and we're starting to crunch some numbers, but we get so much data coming in, it's kind of like data overload, mm -hmm. and then what are you doing with it? All right, right. If, you, if you've got all kind, you know, <clears throat> I can say I've got, you know, X amount of customers and I've got all this stuff going on, but what's it really telling me? And can I make changes that are going to improve? So classic example, I guess, is this pothole thing we've talked about. You can now see where we're going at and what we're doing, right. okay? So does this, then we've got this data, does it say, okay, now we see this is actually a problem area, consistent problem area. So now what we're gonna do is go out and we're not gonna put any more pothole patch in there. We're just gonna fix that chunk of road. Okay, now all of a sudden, you know, we put that cost into it to fix it. So we don't have the pothole crews out there all the time. So we save money there, but this system has to start paying for itself too. Yes, it can't sir. just be paying, you know, saving money at the pothole level. It's, it should be returning investment. And, and the asset management people, when we start, especially for roads, when they start having their first round of PACER stuff coming in, and we can start looking at more detail on these PACER ratings and going beyond PACER into a distressed level rating type system, right. that's going to give them a lot better idea of where we have failures occurring and we can start seeing the history and we're going to start inputting the history of these roads going backwards as part of this so that, you know, we'll have an actual work history for when did we resurface, when did we crack seal, when did we chip seal. And then you're going to be able to start building these deduct curves to say, okay, at year two, we should be chip sealing, or at year three, we should be crack sealing. And we're going to have those curves to show how roads are working. And that's where your biggest bang for your buck is going to come in. Right. And it's going to take a little bit to get all that data in, but I would say that's a three-year payoff at which point then you're just going to be saving money, tons of money with time. Well, we won't just be checking off and keeping track of the roads we checked off. We also can go back in there and look over, over time, what kind of repair we did on what type of road and see how long it lasted and apply that to similar. Right, exactly. And that's that's where you start getting some significant gain. You're going to have significant for sure. Right. And it, I would say, you know, most things you'll start seeing in three years, some things may be five years. But by the time this program has been placed for five years, you're going to have so much data that you're going to be able to literally from the office start saying, okay, we know we got this many roads based on history that are going to be falling apart and we need to do this. We need to dedicate this amount of money to this. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to lose them. And that's where your big money is, is in the roads. Right. Everything else is really fairly small expenditure wise. But it means a lot to the citizens if we can know where ditching is a problem too and to track this okay how often do we need to be ditching so Andy, yeah, so I, got, I got three little things one we we've talked about nap and the customer you know being able to look and point at that that should reduce the amount of office time right too need to answer that phone because it's coming in through that app now yeah. and it's responding to them hey we got it done please let us know if there's an issue Right. So that could end up being not needing a person who's answering the phone could be doing a lot more others because they're not have to answer that phone as much as that. Yeah, I definitely. That you've, you've I would see definitely you program. would have reduced staff time. At, and, and I'll just take this back to my Ann Arbor time. We eliminated three. We had nine secretaries. We eliminated three of them on City Works. So which one are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just think you guys just you're a safe guy, like yes. <laughs> you know, I said those three. You know, we got a monopoly here. Yeah, yeah, the board needs to, somebody to keep us in line. Oh, the other thing so you said is directions for for going out and doing the different projects that are assigned for that day. So that should reduce gas costs and time yes. and material being used. It doesn't need to people know what's being used, right? So we can mm -hmm. track it and see. Yeah, and we can start forecasting 
you know, okay, this is how much actual salt we use for this type of event. And, you know, maybe it's overkill in certain areas and we can say, okay, cut back on the salt guys because we're using too much and fine tune that salt. Because salt's not cheap anymore. You know, we'll have to report as an MPO. Yes. When we become an MPO, we were informed that we will have to use, we will be regulated on the salt use. We will have to report to <laughs> the government how much salt we use. <laughs> per mile of road. And then another, another issue that we, we keep having or hearing from with the townships is we're, we're giving you so much money in this, right. what is our return on this? Will we be able to look at this township got this much money done this year, this week, this month, et cetera, so we can see a big picture versus having to go back through a map or? Yeah, uh, in between roads, I mean, is it a primary road? Is it a gravel road? Is it a, you know, Asphalt road, I mean, all kinds of different, and that's where I guess my job will come in as the analyst, you know, and come in and say, you know, what kind of query do we do on the data today? You know, we're going to have all this data, you know, how can we, how can we create more efficient, uh, you know, workflows? And how, how accessible is that information going to be for the, for the public to see Green Lake Township got $4 million dollars. On average, over the last. That's a decision yeah, for you to sit yeah. down and say, how much do you want on the line, online readily? How much do you want people to have to call us to say, hey, this is the type of thing I'm wanting and we create? How much as commissioners do you want to have access to? You know, there's different levels that you can get into, but some of it you can't just simply generate what every single person wants. So you're going to have to have some things we're going to have to know what they really want so that we can build their so that's all build customizable then that's not right this is what this is the button you can push and it's going to tell you that we can yeah. say we want the township officials to be able to find out yes x and we want the public to be able to find out x and we want it there's, yeah. there's and based internal versus external for sure yes. okay. and based on the level of training these townships get in their they can actually use the same software through the web interface to be able to help them develop their own asset management plans. If they want to start looking at, you know, these are the roads we want to prioritize, they can start looking at what would it cost for them as a township and is it worth potentially having a township? That's knowledge? more important to that feature than kind of what you were saying, but it helps in that sense. Andy. That also would be my next point. Yeah. If it, can they then sure. interfere and go, this is what we yeah. want to do. And, and, they would, are, and they, this is why. So they've got data driven versus emotion driven. Well, I drive over this pothole every day and this road, well, that's one pothole that's right. fixed every eight months versus. And so East Bay Township will have East Bay Township data that they can manipulate and look at and see. And, you know, depending on the level of training they have, they'll be able to do a lot off of the website and having a website access. But they have to learn how to use it, too. Because okay. so. that, that may affect my life more later. Yes. Understood. We're not going to listen to you at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll listen. You may not hear a thing I say. Are you all set there, Brad? We got I am more. set for You're now set on set. that one. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to move along to... Now, sale and moving of house. Okay. Um, <laughs> this one, um, you know, we had discussed in brief detail, um, you know, the fact that, yes, we may have some ability to uh, turn around and sell the structure on there without that ever being mentioned to the public, per se. We've had at least five calls of people that want the house. That's good. Yeah. So, so we got ten more somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we have one person that just wants the garage, the detached garage, um, but we have other people that want the house and they want to pick up the house and move the house. So basically, what we're looking at, and it's up to you, I guess, is how you want to proceed. We feel like, you know, it may be something better off to sell that house as one structure and then the garage as one structure and have two separate proposals. And all we would do is basically do a reverse of a little bit. We go for the high bid 
of who's going to do it, and they would have to be able to show to us that we would ask for a bid bond from them to say, hey, we're yes, serious we're serious about, about this. But then we would like to be able to send it out as a proposal for people to move the house, and they would have to justify and document to us that, hey, I know what I'm doing. I have this contractor that can move the house for me from here to here, and we know that they are serious about it because they're going to put some money in the pot before we're going to even take their bid seriously. And then we feel that, you know, we'd like to be able to have something, you know, so that by October we have the house getting ready to be moved and get out of it. So you got to put a date on it. That's fine. That's cool. I mean, that's what we're hoping. Now I want to, I want a, just general feedback so you can let us know what your recommendations and what you'd prefer us to do with this as you have to approve the sale of any property right after we're talking. Well, if you've already had two different type of offers, one for the house, one for the garage, I, I think that pretty straightforward. We do two separate structures in my opinion. Clearly you separate. Two, two, two separate yeah. in my opinion. And, and, and I think your thought, you know, making sure that they, um, you know, what, once, I mean, once we have their money and they have it on wheels and it's on the road, it's theirs, yeah. I mean, it's gone. Yeah. But, you know, but I mean, definitely we want to make sure that, that, you know, our liability issue is not there, that they've covered right. that. Um, but that's my opinion. You know, are they, opinion. are they turning off the gas and electrical? Are they paying for all that? It will be all shut down by the former owners. It'll be shut off from when they take, when they let it go, so. Well, um, it's gotta be moved then by October because we don't want that sitting there with water in those places. Well, we'd have to winterize it. We'd have to winterize yeah. it if it's not going away. And and I mean, if we would definitely want to winterize it, not not heat it at that point if nobody's in it. I mean, mm -hmm. right? That'd just be an expense. Ideally, it's gone. Well, yeah. Yeah. So when is when is the, when are, are they gonna unoccupy the structure? What's the date? I, I've gone by there. It looks like they're pretty darn close, if not gone, but they have not notified our realty agent that they are out yet. Okay. So they were required to let us know, and they have a deadline coming up for when they have to be out, but they were required as part of the agreement to let us know, hey, we're out, and you can take it whenever you need it. So once that's done, we'll have to start talking to utilities to say, okay, you know, if we're going to end up moving this. We need to have it separated from utilities and we need to have this done and this done and this done. And we're going to have to have Carrie get involved to make sure that the document we send out, because we've never, at least not since that house. we can find, we've never sold the house to be. Moved. <laughs> I mean, I know there was one that they did when something else was built, right. but yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, down on the so do we yeah. do we need to authorize you to start accepting bids? I just want I just want a suggestion of how you want it taken care of and make sure I'm not missing anything that you guys are concerned with right now so that we can start the process, run it through carry, make sure everything is okay, and then send out a proposal and we will send it out then one for the garage, one for the house. I support Jason's uh, motion. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, I just it, it moved to authorize that you uh, prepare uh, for publication uh, to to accept bids for, for the the house on Keystone and Cass. Yeah. And, and, and the garage. And the garage. And separate. That's separate. Yeah, separate. 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 Any of the proposals, like the guy wants only the garage, and people want only the house. Yeah. Have any of them linked together where it, it would matter? That anybody cares that they want both. They could bid on both. Well, I mean, care. sometimes you can say you can have this one, you can have this one, or we'll let you give a combo bid and then see what what's most advantageous. Yeah, we could do that. That's not no. bad. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would not support that. Yeah, we can do that. Well, well, you know, I'll just, just make not, sure it's all written right by Carrie, and we'll go from there. Yeah, That's uh, you know, if somebody wants them both and can't get them both, then they don't want either. Um, Somebody gets to graduate. I'm really speculating here. I haven't talked to you know. I don't know what any of the five have said, but you know, you said one person wants just the garage. Just the garage. Uh, I mean, did the other four want the garage and the house, or did they want just the they, house? They asked specifically about the house. That doesn't okay. necessarily mean they didn't want. Well, that. you know, the thing is, the house, the, house has an the house has an attached, attached garage, garage yeah, which would right. go with it. So this yeah. is a separate. So this is a standalone yeah. garage. Yeah. Separate 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 separate. Separate. 
Yeah. yeah. As long as it's not a deal killer one way or the other, I guess I don't care. I, you know, I, I said structure it so that we have the best opportunity to get okay. the best return. And if nobody cares that it's not a deal killer, garage, no, you know, separate building. Otherwise, Here, here's my thought, um, and I'm in agreement with you too, Bill, but it, it may be to the point where um, they have to winterize that and let it set till spring because, I mean, we're, you, you look at the calendar. Yeah. By the time we get this thing all finalized, they may not be able to move it down the road. They may not have time to be able to get it off the property. You want it after in October, right? We would like it, but I mean, it's not going to be first frost. Well, the, it's no, I'm just talking, talking weather plus plus yeah, they got to get they got to get move it wherever yeah. they're moving it. Yeah, yeah they got to get somebody to move it, and then they got to get permitted. Yeah. And, and if there's any wires to be moved, yep, yep, yep. it's a coordination thing that take, doesn't happen in 10 minutes. Take the money in full, that they, they take the bid and taking the money in full, and then that they're responsible to winterize and it. They got to insure it. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. it's not going to get off the property. They're going to have to winterize it. And then and then at that point, do they insure it as theirs? I don't know how, I don't know how, we, would, I don't know how we would address it, but that's something. That's a, a legal thing. I, I, I don't know. But yeah. I'm just looking at, at there's a lot of hurdles you got to jump through here. Right. To get this thing going down the road, yeah, just have a bid application ready here at the office that you can give anybody that needs it and okay. just advertise for the bid, right? Yeah. You know, and then we can and we'll see. Bid. Who knows? I mean, they may be able to. I don't know. I, from what it sounded like, one of the guys that I talked to may be from a house moving company. All right, right. <laughs> and that's, that's beautiful. He and said, that, he said, ah, it's an easy one to move. We got to cut be. one thing off of it. And do another thing and so another thing, but we can get yeah, there. You know. There used to be an old guy, and he had all the you probably seen the guy, Bill. I don't know, he had a big beard, man. And he moved yeah. up a bunch of them, he moved up a bunch of houses around here. And I century mean, movers was it something? Yeah. It was, it, yeah, yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. had done, I mean, yeah. lots of them. I haven't seen him in the 80s, me either. <laughs> but uh, okay. so you got your marching orders? Yes, we will proceed on. Okay, thank you. All right, now we're down to the highlights. Did we both? Or do we have I, to? I don't think you need well, to. I think wait, wait, there's just, a motion. Or, or, or you I mean, I did make a motion. Well, I'll just, no, just do it. Yeah, we, we can just do a vo yeah, 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 yeah. voice vote. You got the motion down, Kylie. Okay, we can just do a voice voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There we go. Okay. Just, just yep. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, you're still on board here. You're not done yet? No, these are just no. little things okay. here. Um, I have very you short. Said that before. No, these are very short. Hopefully, uh, we met with. We don't ask any questions. We're out here. <laughs> we met with. Here we might. We met with Fife Lake Township um, about Lakeshore Drive again. Um, they are still interested in possibly doing something. Uh, they went, wish to make an appointment and appear in front of the board to request higher than the twenty-five percent match. Um, because they feel it's a cut through and it's not really their, it's not really their traffic. That's the only thing mm -hmm. affected by it. So they are going to come in for you guys in September and they're going to sit down with you. <clears throat> if anybody wants any more information about what's been happening out there, feel free, let me know. I can let you, I can talk to you about it, but it's pretty straightforward. They, you know, they were on a list to be repaired when the previous millage was passed or this last, last renewal and it never got done. So a lot of things were dropped off that list because the priorities changed to being primaries. You said right lake company? Yes. It, it's right on it's the lake. It's the one that goes well, around yeah. the lake. Well, it's, what I'm curious is, do they want to come in set with us in December? No, in September. In September, next month. September. They want to make an appointment so that they can come in and talk to you or do it by Zoom as part of the appointment process right. on the well, I thought, on the agenda. I'm glad, yeah, I thought December would be odd because well, we might as well go January and have the new supervisor there. But November 20th, the new supervisor. Yeah. Oh, November yeah. is when yeah. it happens. Yeah. Yeah, that is done. Yeah, no, so why, they, so I mean, I they indicated that it was on the list to be repaired? It was apparently on the list um, in 2016. I think it's a three to five year. Big long Dude, priority list. We had a lot of those on that list. list. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But then after that, the board's priority on following the asset management plan changed so that we were following more of what the asset management council recommended, where you need to get your primaries 
in shape before you start focusing drastically on your locals. Right. And so, but they are going to come in and talk to you about okay. this um, and for the next meeting. Uh, I think we had a fairly productive meeting. We did get some things straightened out with them, but um, they still have some concerns with the cost of it for the people that are there. Um, I'd like to just pass on because the crew has been doing a phenomenal job with ditching. We have received many, many kudos, and I just want to pass it on on behalf of the citizens out there to you. Uh, they are thrilled with the ditching that we are doing. We are receiving tons of compliments on our ditching and the fact that we're using our new jetter to clear culverts. One gentleman who said he has had water standing in front of his house every time it rains for the last 15 years said the last heavy rain that came down had nothing. It flowed Saturday morning, It flowed, it flowed the ditch perfectly and went out to where it was supposed to be. And it drained out into the area that it used to drain to 15 plus years ago. Um, and so we are also looking, we've got airport road state to start doing some ditching out there. And one gentleman was with using some fairly colorful language was thrilled. To, de to death that we are going to be hitting that. So I'd just like to pass that on because our crews are getting a lot of compliments on the job we're doing in the ditching. We've had some people that were upset that we're ditching in their yard, but the majority of them understand the need for it. Um, sure, what I got. Um, I just want to show everybody this. This is the old employee survey with lots of red. Live red was bad. Um, we have taken a new survey. We got the results back and Jennifer has pulled the numbers together. She and I are working on the actual essay questions. I'll read a little excerpt of what she had to say. Um, it, she says the survey was composed of two sections, the first being a one to five scale rating with one being not at all or disagree and five being all the time or agree. The second section is comprised of the essay questions that allow individuals to answer the data has been collected and in the 13 categories rated in the first section of the survey, all categories received an all overall average score exceeding three, which would be white or green. Um, this is a distinct improvement over 2019 results where only five categories were rated with an overall average score over three. And looking at individual departments, there is only one instance of an average rating score that is below three in this most recent survey. So we went from all that red, we have now one red in the entire survey. Um, and that is that they don't feel that they're, they still don't feel there are good enough lines of communication between the front office and the back. And the only thing I can say about that is it's real tough to put 50 people in a room right now. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so for us to be able to actually have personal communications has been very difficult. Um, Jay, our new superintendent, has built some dashboards for them to show them how fast we're making progress. And he's got them in the back. And he's, you know, making notes of things that we're doing really well and compliments that we get. So they're seeing this too. And I think that's going to help in the beginning. We still need to get to the point where we have some additional communication, but with us being stuck with this limited gathering it's been tough for us too um and last we are going to have a staff end of season picnic picnic on the 11th of september as of right now um erp jennifer the company jennifer works with and the supervisors are going to be chipping in on some of the costs and working with the humane society for a dunk your boss tank so if you come to this and we'd like to see you all come with us and maybe, you know, greet the folks out there. We're talking dirt, burgers and dog. We're going to do a tailgate theme. We're going to bring all of our trucks plus some of the personal trucks into the back, make a big circle so that we can all stand around the pickups and be separated an adequate distance. But we're also going to have an older Michigan, Michigan State football game playing in the background. Oh, and we're going to have it set up. Hey, who wins this one? <laughs> not picking the year. So, <laughs> so we're going to try and make this something that's not only entertaining for everybody, but it's a good chance for everybody to sit down 
and talk and, you know, be able to express, you know, themselves to other people and talk to other people that they don't normally get. To what, see. what time is it? Uh, we're going to start it at about 1145 with food being served at noon. What, what was the date again? The 11th of September. So it's, I don't even know. Right. Huh? Not this coming from like it's two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you send yeah. us a, a meeting? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be. And and he didn't didn't bring he he brought up part of it, but he didn't he didn't stick his hand out yet too. He, if any of the commissioners would like to chip in on the cost of this, um, they would gladly accept that. So, yeah. and that's up to you. You know, I mean, right now we are we're just trying to get something that helps get these folks the recognition and we're going to talk about mm -hmm. some of their great accomplishments they've had well, it's been over a hot the summer, summer so they have good. done a ton that's, of work yep. and they are just i mean the the difference in morale in the back from what it was a year ago is unbelievable good. i mean people are thrilled with what's going on oh yes it's <laughs> unbelievable how much happier they are and they are they are doing a lot more work in a lot less time than i think they were doing in any time in the recent future or in the recent past. And I think in the future, we're going to see even more as we have people now moving through training programs and getting into this ability to actually learn how to use other, other pieces of equipment. You know, the difference between now and not too long ago was that now if the guys went out with the sign and, and it went to the left, but the road went to the right, <laughs> yeah. they probably wouldn't put it up. <laughs> They'd call you and say, they turn it upside down. down. Well, well, we actually have we to all do, do it that way, yeah. because well, that's what we're that's told to do, and that's our job. Yeah. If it's the arrow's wrong way, the curve was going to the left, and the arrow was going to the right. So, well, not good. Not, anyway, good. good. not good. So, way different. <laughs> okay. So you're all set, Brad. I am. So, okay. um, you'd mentioned something about Kingsley. Oh, well, yeah, Kingsley. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll let uh, Carl okay. start on that. One. Well, we. Did the Zoom meeting, um, and and Wayne and Brad and myself were on it, and uh, basically went through the synopsis of of what we envisioned that we needed, and what we were willing to do there, and and they did take a vote on uh, whether to proceed on. You know, I, we we still have some hurdles, you know, as far as um, the restrictions that's on the property, getting by that, but. Um, they had some questions. Um, <clears throat> staff answered them all on that, and and. Um, I think they had four members there that night. One was missing, right? And uh, and it was unanimous that uh, that they thought that it was a good idea, and they approved that. You know, not not knowing of whatever glitches we're going to run into. Right. Um, Dan Hawkins, it is Hawkins. Right? Yes. Yeah, he 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 was online too. He's the village manager, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and he was favorable at that point. You know, it's like yeah. But we, you know, there's still a lot of the unknowns. Yeah. Right? There's some. There is some concern with M113 that they feel like by adding volumes to M113 at the location, we could cause problems. MDOT's going to do the evaluation. And it's their road. They're going to tell us whether we can put the drive. Right and, and I had another. And I don't see any issue because it'll be right across from the booth. Right. And I had another thought of that. That's actually that access there is in a 45 mile an hour zone. Our building is actually on the west side of Kingsley, it's in a 55 mile an hour because that sign is east of our building yeah. there. So it's actually supposedly a slower traffic zone there. Right. So with a turn lane besides. Right. So, you know, and that, and almost yeah, any time you do this. In and out. What's that? There'll be a second in and out, correct? Through the school? Well, the school will have their way for them right. to come in. Not, not, this will not be a public road. Right, but I mean, but for us, not all vehicle traffic coming no, uh, in and will, out from ours will go on the highway. It yeah, could no. go through. No, it won't go through because it'll be going through school property. So we won't okay. be driving through school. But right, the buses right. will have access out right through our way. It'd right. be kind of like Olson's over here. They have a road behind there that is yeah, just bus into the bus. school buses right. only. So, yeah. uh, you know, so they always bring the traffic issue up. Yeah. You know, I, I, that, that's always the first thing. Same amount of traffic coming out of the old facility is will be coming out of the new. That's right. So I, I don't see that to be an issue. I don't see it to be an MDOT issue either. I, I you know, and somebody really have to 
tell me why. Right. And they have, you know, they as part of the agreement when they got the land from the state of Michigan was that if they sold any portion of it, they did have to get a fair market value from it. That fair market value is not going to be that much because of the fact that it's a landlocked parcel mm -hmm. and the way it sits, yeah. there's only a certain few people that can even use it. So we don't expect any. And it's just also thing. not to be sold to a for profit right. entity commercial yeah. enterprise. Right. And it's yeah. just red vine. So, so it's not. Yeah, and so the other thing is we've done a but we've done our soil balancing. Our engineer Rob did a soil balancing on it. We've got to move seventy thousand yards of soil, but there's plenty on site to do that. So and we're not bringing in any seventy thousand is not much. You know, it sounds like a big number to a lot of people. It sure does. You start moving it with pans, it's not much dirt. That's no, not a. That's, that's it. Not. It's you know based on what I talked to the engineer who works for. Um, the Grand Travers. Grand Travers. Gosh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Getting late. We all have those moments. <laughs> <laughs> but I talked to the engineers there, and they said that's less than a week's worth of work. But yeah, that's not much dirt. So basically, dirt. basically, the biggest thing is going to be getting the stumps out of there after the trees, and the trees will be gone quick right. for that right. amount of space. Or a couple of days, the loggers will have those out of there. That's not yeah. much. So, cool. All right, you all set. I am. I am. Uh, okay, Bill. No, that sounds like uh, we need to proceed as quickly as possible, uh, so we'll be able to build a building next spring. Even. I agree. Andy, um, I had some people out in Bessie River Road reach out to me about some drainage issues, and then they reached back out to me and said, "Oh my God, you guys did amazing." Oh, good. And so our crews did a really good job getting some. There's just water that's been going over their driveway. So around ditching. their driveway, under their driveway. It's a little more than ditching. It was some other issues that had to be, but the crews did, took care of it and we got another heavy rain shortly after and it didn't do what it had been doing for years. So they're, they're really happy that that got fixed. And I had the opportunity today to watch some uh, some high ridge removal. That's impressive with that, that, that machinery we bought, how yeah. quickly they can go, how much safer it is. And we've got guys doing stuff, learning, so they can move up within our organization and that the morale, like, like you said, was much better. I mean, they were, they look happy to be doing what they were doing versus I'm here to do it. So whatever's going on, you guys are doing a good job and the crews are doing an amazing job out on the, out on the, uh, in the community. Yeah. And I have to give credit to the crew because they are, like I said, they're willing to take on anything now and people are loving their, their job. So, and so as long as they love it, they do much better work. Oh yeah. Happy, happy people are a lot better. That's for sure. I have two words and then I will have nothing else to say beyond that. Just right. because these two words have to be said just to keep the meeting, you know, complete. Love road. <laughs> <laughs> Mark? All right. Um, can you top all that up? <laughs> so what, what's the status of the OHM contract for phase two? They're um, working for they're moving forward with it. To give us a contract that we can look at. Oh, we already approved it. Did we not? No. This board did not approve it. I don't I don't recall for sure. I thought we did, but I wouldn't bet money. No, on we it. didn't. I knew it'll give me a Bible. <laughs> we didn't. All we did was um, permit Wayne to go back. And negotiate with them and then have them come back with their final proposal to us because they were splitting phase two into A and B. What meeting would that have been? I'll have to look that up because I thought we had asking, approved that's it too. Asking, that's what I'm asking. Um, did you, was there a meeting I wasn't at that you guys may have done that? No, may have I don't I think you missed one. I don't, I don't yeah, I don't, but. no, I thought everybody was here when we did it, but I'll have to double check. I'll look into it soon. All right, because it's just been hanging out there in my mind. Um, so um, also uh, the manager review process. Um, I was thinking that uh, the board ought to be talking to Jennifer and, um, you know, maybe getting that together so that we can, do it start the process in october complete it in november then we're not racing to the finish line in december and then we can actually do the review maybe in december and then and then you know 
whatever we decide is known prior to the first of the year. I'd like to get that process done because Andy's definitely not going to be here. And I think he needs to wait on it, have that opportunity. And there's a chance that I'm not going to be here. So I think it's, it's important we get it on that and get it done. So there's a good chance November 20th that we'll no longer be on the board. So well, before yeah, that date would be are great. Are you effective time. November 20th? Yeah. If I win the election, I would be effective. But are you time. running against me? Is there is no one on the ballot running against me. So if I win the election, okay. So Andy's not going to be here right. November 20th. Yeah. So we actually need to speed that timetable up. We need to have Hugh, Hugh kind of Kylie. Why don't you have Jennifer give me a call? I'll get the thing going. Um, and, and then we'll see what Jennifer says as far as her time frame here. But We'll expedite it. We'll make sure that it should we, um, and, and speaking to that, should we uh, move if we can our November? Well, I mean, no, what we do, Jason, is we've got to ask the county board. board to do one of two things. One, they need to appoint for November and December, or they can choose to wait. And do the, my turns up in December. So, anyway. right, right, right. So, so, but they can appoint because there's an open seat. And and, and well, your your term is done at the end of interview. December. You you would have to re up. Correct. Okay. So so he, technically, if we bumped up, when is our November meeting? It's not the the fourth because that that's Thanksgiving. Did we go the week earlier? I think we did. We, it would have been the week. I think of which would be the 19th or the day before. <laughs> <laughs> so you're good. 24th. What? We put it on two. We bumped we it up. Days. We right. bumped it up from oh, Thanksgiving we did to two Tuesday. days. And that's a normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the right. normal. So, so October is Andy's last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Unless we change the November meeting. Right. Well, it's hard to do because of deer season and right. That, that was and the other Thanksgiving. thing. Yep. It just doesn't doesn't happen. So. Unless you put it clear to the 12th. Well, you, 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 well, you put it the week of the 16th, you could. You could put it like the, the 19th. The 19th, yeah. It is literally the day before. Right. But but would that be the final review? And is that why we'd be doing it? So that That's why we would be doing it. Yeah. So we don't need to make that decision right now no. if we're not able to get that timeline. No, let me. But we can let her know that. Yeah, well, we just, can get that timeline. Yeah. Just, it doesn't take. We'll have, I'll talk to Jennifer and we'll, we'll, we'll get it expedited. That's not, that's not a problem. You know, I mean, we, we should we be able to, have a we, we shouldn't have a problem. We just need to get those dates on the calendar ASAP. So, all right. Okay. Yep. So if you want to let us vote OHM, that would be good. Because I don't see a vote on that. So I haven't, I might have missed it. That's it. I, 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 you may have missed it, but I don't know that for a fact either. You know, I can't. I thought we did. I, I wouldn't have money on that. I wouldn't do so. Okay. We had, Sorry, we, discussion we were dancing around it, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Chris one. Oh, So an email with, with whether we approved it in a meeting and what day and. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got one guy that we kind of skipped here. Sorry. I'm going to skip him again. <laughs> Kylie, would you like to add? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Now it's your turn, Phil. Um, <laughs> yeah. The MDOT released uh, some numbers today. Uh, the month, month of July collections, just gross receipts without the redirected income tax is pretty close to what it was last year. Uh, it was only down 0.6%. Wow. Uh, motor fuel taxes were down 15%, but registration fees. We're up 16%. So, kind of washed the big difference is the uh, increase in the redistricted, re, uh, redirected income tax transfers that they're doing this year. Um, that was 17 million more for the month than it was prior year. We did uh, receive our share of the $3 million McCrisp up dividend that they declared earlier this year. Our share of that, of that check was about $43,000. And then we recently also uh, got salt prices in uh -oh. uh, through the My Deal contract. Um, Detroit Salt won the early bid, and we have Compass Minerals for the late bid. On average, we're you know about three dollars three dollars less than it was last year uh, for the order 
um, between the two bills, we had ordered 70,000 tons for just county salt, um, not including the state. It'd be a save, it's about a savings of $21,000. So that's so high, but yeah. um, the early bill price is 76.53 a ton. So, yeah, down is good. <laughs> that's the right direction. Even if it's high, it's good. Going the right direction. So, anything else, Bill? That's, that's all I have. So thank you. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> now I'm waiting yes. for, for one. Oh, we've got one last public comment. Bill? Did you, what, you want to read that text? <laughs> 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 it's a calendar. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Okay, one, one last public comment. I almost skipped that one and I apologize for that. Any person may make an advanced appointment with the board regarding road commission topics for a regular or special meeting in accordance with the open meeting act. And if an appointment is made, the topic will be an agenda item. The following applies to public comment. Please state his or her name and address. Topic must be relevant to the road commission. Individuals are allowed to speak once for up to three minutes on a single topic, which may be extended by the chair. A group addressing the board requires a designated spokesperson who may speak up to 10 minutes. The board will not act on any item from the public that is not on the agenda. If you are participating through Zoom and wish to make a public comment, please raise your hand. For Collins, we'll, we, we will unmute. If you wish to speak, say yes. Just 30 seconds ever. Right? You want to raise your hand, Larry? It's going to take a long time. 30 seconds is a long time. It's a lot longer than you think when, you, when you're waiting. Yeah. Somebody's going to do it at like the last. Yeah. <laughs> what was Steve going to do that last second? Yeah. And time's up. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Um, Steve, even there still. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess we're there. Good. Okay. Jason, it's your turn. Move to adjourn. So be it. <laughs> I got stopped by the state police the other day. I was pulling my job trailer. And I, I was on 113, I turned on the shekel. I knew he was going to stop me. He's, so he 